Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahla wa sahlan. Welcome guys. Let me know if you guys can hear. I've changed the settings a bit. Yeah, I don't know if you like this new kind of uh, thing where you can see. Uh, you can see the chat settings, the chat um, image. Slightly adjusted it. Let's just. Okay, let's do that. Let me see if I can play around with this. Right, so. How's everyone? Everyone good? Everyone enjoying themselves? Ahlo wa sahlan. Uh, 0.0. Assalamu alaikum wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The uh, screen isn't isn't flickering, is it? Uh, let's just have a little check. Is the screen flickering or no flickering? Is it um, lagging? Let's have a little check. Uh, wa alaikum assalam. Ullu kabata kaifa hal. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Arabi, Arabi. Can I come on your podcast with that much knowledge? Well, if you just want to say kaifa hal, then you can come on for the duration of kaifa hal. Mudassir Mujtaba wa alaikum assalam. Ahla wa sahlan. Ahla wa sahlan. Mudassir. Hope you're well. Uh, which tea do you have today? Oh, today I have. Guess which color tea I have today. Take a guess. Um. Has steam uh, steam started? Steam hasn't started yet. <laughs> I can't see Sheikh. Yeah. Uh, alaikum assalam. Ahla wa sahla Muhammad. Hope you're well too as well, bro. Oh, good to see you all the time. Can't you see him? Take your plug put and put it back. In. Can you guys see the stream? Uh, cannot be found. This will card. I'm only seeing the poster. Uh, you'll have to restart your device. Standing on one leg. <laughs> All right, guys. You know, you are, mashallah, the the most uh, caring, concerning person <laughs> in the world. <laughs> Question is: organ donation after death permissible? Okay, I'll come to that one, inshallah. Wait, let me try that quickly. Assalamu alaikum, ahla wa sahlan, as Hussein. Wa alaikum assalam. Yes, you can hear, can hear and see. Alhamdulillah, you very, you you very tired. You okay? Alhamdulillah, very good. Thank you very much. Um, it's just I, I have arthritis in the winter, so it plays up. Yeah, and today I had some red meat, uh, ribs today. So, uh, you know what that means? I'm going to feel a bit tired-ish, right? So, just going to have to ignore that. Uh, but yeah, Jazakallah Khair Oriental for asking. Is it permissible, possible to do istikhara daily, HYT? Oh, now your name comes up, HYT. <laughs> Uh, okay, we'll answer that one inshallah as well. Worked, Allah Akbar. Valerie, mashallah, Valerie de Leon. I hope you're well. Hope Texas is good. Uh, randomly, Sheikh, you are okay. You look like you had a long, rough day. Yeah, so as I said, you know, it's my uh, arthritis kicking in. It just comes, it just, it just flares sometimes because the weather's a bit, you know, cold these days. So it's been, uh, you know, very nice and uh, okay just put my phone on charge before i forget um okay uh damn the live questions in the video look good you like the live questions yeah i can actually change these you know right i can change these there's some different sort of like settings i can have uh this one looked a bit nice this is actually a disappearing one I don't want it to disappear. I don't know why it's disappearing. Yeah, I don't want it to disappear. So I will try to make it not disappear, guys, for you guys. Um, because I want the live stream to be nice and perfect for you guys. Right, so inshallah, it's not going to disappear. No disappearing. Let's try this. All that I have to do for you guys. SubhanAllah. 
Oh, let's try this. Alright, let's see. Will it do? Will it not do? I don't know why messages are hiding. Okay, but anyway, supposed to not hide. Uh, okay, I think. I don't know where they disappear to. Disappearing. Okay, let me just try this one more thing, and if that doesn't work, then I'll have to just resort back to how it was in the past. Okay, we don't want it to. Right, let's just try this. I'm not sure. Okay. Anyway, if it doesn't, if it, if you guys don't like it, I'll, I'll change it back to how it was in the past. I don't know how, why it's not. So that's showing up. All right. So. Um, What's up? I love you and all, but please reduce the mustache size too prominent and takes away from the noor. Allah. Come on guys, man. The, the the mustache. This is this is like the pleasure I get when I just like turn my mustache. Yeah, it gives me like uh you know makes me feel important. Uh Amina wa alaikum as salam. Ahla wa sahlan Amina. Ahla wa sahlan, welcome, welcome. Uh, mashallah, looks very futuristic. Salam, ahla wa sahla, maulana, nuski, ahlan, ahlan, ahlan. Uh, okay. Hope you're well. Hope everything's well on your side of the planet. Salam alaikum, Sufyan, ahla wa sahla, ahlan wa sahla. Lights on the sofa look very nice. Yeah, thank you very much. These are little like. Small little bead lights, and uh, they kind of give a bit more depth to the to the to the videos. Yeah, kind of like see what I do for you guys. Look what I do for you guys. Uh, Junaid, wa alaikum assalam. Ahlan wa sahlan, Muhammad Junaid. Oriental, what di what, dif what does different madhabs or Islam say in general when it comes to having acting as a profession? Okay, I think that means we should start the questions. Yeah. All right, I think that means. Question times are going to start now. All right. Anyway, right. So let's start with this then. I just hope it's not getting a bit slow. All right. Curious. Check out curious cat. What you guys are saying over there as well. Uh, All right, so let's start off with questions first of all from you guys over here. So what are you guys saying, man? What are you guys saying? What are you guys saying? All right, first question is... Uh, is organ donation after death permissible? What I would suggest for this is, Muhammad, is if you Google Mufti Zubair Bhatt and on the NHS website, they've actually got Mufti Zubair Bhatt is a student of Mufti Taki Usmani. He's written a whole detailed fatwa on the permissibility of organ donation after death. So you can check that out. Um, so, I mean, if you aren't sure about anything in there, then I can explain to you. But in a nutshell, the difference of opinion amongst the early the, amongst the Hanafis regarding this issue is that uh, can you use a human body after their death? Can you use parts of their body to help someone else survive, live? So uh, according to the texts that were written in the past, no, you can't. And the main reason was because... In them days, they never imagined that you could ever save someone's life by giving them a, 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 
like one of your organs without them consuming it because that's like the only kind of thing that they could imagine was uh you know eating all right so this is why you know um when it comes to this sort of like practice in the olden days they never imagined that you could do a medical sort of like um, you know transplant um but but uh, the new modern technology and the new more modern science has shown that you actually can use if the organs are viable you can use them for other bodies if they accept it and uh, so therefore it's not like dishonoring the body it's not degrading to the body that's basically what the what they say uh okay next question is it possible to do istikhara daily yes you can do it as many times as you like yeah as many times as you like um Muhammad, yeah, you're gonna like this, aren't you? That's the way, bro. I looked at, I, I, I seen a bit of that. Uh, what's it? The Quran. Yeah, I seen a bit of that, bro. Looks good. Looks good. Um, what do the different madhabs say in, in general when it comes to having acting as a profession? I'm not sure what the other madhabs say, but there doesn't seem to be any problem in the Hanafi madhab with regards to this. Yeah, there doesn't seem to be any, 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 any issues with regards to this. Uh, acting in films, it wouldn't be a problem as long as a person is not obviously doing anything haram, like you know, touching the opposite gender, uh, غير محرم, uh, and so forth. Yeah, it, it, there'd be scope for it. MashaAllah, Qasim, Ahla wa sahla. I can't see, I, I don't know why these uh, are not showing up on the screen. Oh, super chat, you can see it there, but it's not really kind of colored nicely. That's the thing, isn't it? Why isn't the super chat colored nicely? So, Qasim, Jazakallah khair. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Thank you very much for your kind donation. May Allah bless you. Um, I'm going to try to sort this out so we can see Qasim's donation. Qasim, you are the man. You, MashaAllah, every single week you are donating to the channel. Alhamdulillah. All right, let's just see if I can adjust the notification colors. Ah, actually, I can do this, you know. Yeah, I, f I figured this thing out that I can do. How many languages do you speak? <laughs> you hear that, guys? How many languages do you speak? So I can actually get like different like the speech that the kind of comments that you say I can get them I can get get it read out. Check that out. Uh, okay, so let's see appearance. Uh, show. That was pretty cool, LOL. Look at that. Oh yeah, that was pretty cool. LOL. So who said that? I don't know who said that. Someone said that. Yeah, Ahmed. Yeah, so you guys can type something and and, and it will read. It will, it will it will it will say it out. I don't know if you guys can hear or not. Uh, uh, Difference between Wallaby, Shia, and other sites. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. Got a deep thick question. Which is oh funny. yeah, that's it. I asked by email. Is it true that the Hanafi Madhab is the only Madhab that allows perfumes, fragrances? Colognes with alcohol in it. I always get rebuked when I have a nice cologne and go to the masjid to pray. Salam Sheikh since Imam Abu Hanifa was a muta kalim. Is Fiqh al Akbar a book on Athari Akida or Al Mal Kalam? I was once your Twitter mutual adver. <laughs> that is too funny, man. I don't know. Can you guys, can you guys hear it? says FTH isn't harem. That doesn't mean he's implying the opposite. That is how. I want to ask. Ah, this is too good, man. I think forget the live stream today. Just listen to this guy, man. He can do different languages, by the way. Yeah, you can do different languages. So if you guys know a different language. This voiceover is so funny. Macro tyranny ruling due to lack of categorical textual evidences. You can read nicknames as well. Yeah. Let's check this out. Let's see if we can. I'm enjoying this more than I should. Yeah, now someone else say something. Have a joke. Face with tears of joy. Face with tears of joy. Face with tears of joy. Boxing MMA fan. Valane. Mubin Rama. Valane. Yes, yes, yes. Face with tears of joy. Face with tears of joy. Face with tears of joy. Do a cat with her. Hello. Sharif Will. Okay, let's do like. Sounds Lithia British robot. This is the. Face rolling on the floor laughing. Face rolling on the floor laughing. Face rolling on the floor laughing. Amin Ijaz. Face with tears of joy. 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 Does it do a Birmingham accent? I don't know, man. I don't know. Ahmad. Does it do a Birmingham accent? Mubin Rahman. 
Supercalifragilisticus espialidasius. Ibra Hussein. Salam. Came on her podcast, but due to technical difficulties, couldn't partition it. Ulupak Hi. Hi. Amina Ijaz. Lol Mubin. Full green Sushi Make it do in Irish accent. Amina Ijaz. Dil Dil Pakistan. Mudasir Mushtaba. Oh, French. Shibour Alejan. Amatula Slav Ophala. Salaam Mufti Saad ici Talal Towea. Imitation artificielle Rim Wuxid of Salaf or Roman. Yeah, oui, 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 oui. Lol Lo Maigo. Boxing okay, let's look for let's look for Bangladesh. Yeah, Bangladesh. You want to look for Bangladesh? Oh, no Bangladesh, no Pakistan, no India. India. Oh, you got some India, yeah. Okay, we got yeah, we got India. Yeah, I think India is going to be like just generic kind of Indian Pakistan kind of accent. <laughs> this is too. This is too good, man. Yeah, okay, let's check this one out, yeah? Yeah, come on guys, say something. Say something. By the way, the tea today is the blue tea. Blue tea today. I'm in the Good Lord. Look what I do for you guys, yeah. And you guys you guys think lockdown is boring, yeah? When you got lockdown and you got live stream going on here, my kind of live stream. That's it man. That's Video is lagging for me. Is it just me? Oh, look at Pitha. Hello, my name is David. I am calling from your telephone provider. Hamza Bhakti. It's super laggy. Madasim Ujfba. TLP Zindabad. Boxing the fan. Afbala Ali? Amina Ijaz. I have been laughing like crazy. Ahamaf. Hello, this is Orange Customer Support. How may I help? Oh, look at Pitha. Lagging. Full brain 45. It is lagging a lot. New bin Rahman. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Oh look at Pitha. Too many nationalities. <laughs> okay, okay. We'll we'll stop that. We'll stop that now. Okay, why is it lagging for? Oh no. It's lagging, yeah? Yeah, I think today internet's a bit a bit slow today. Or might might just be this that I'm doing, so I'm gonna have to Take this off, yeah, inshallah. Once I get my new computer, then that's it, man. We're going to be hearing these accents. Yeah. So those of you guys who complain and say, like, please don't don't do your accent. You're gonna find out. Okay. So let's. Okay, let's uh, okay anyway let's continue so uh, the lagging hopefully should stop in a bit I mean I'm not too sure why there's there is this kind of lag but I think it was because I was doing that voice thing and it takes up a lot of uh, um, a lot of the power on the computer. All right. So anyway, Jazakallah Khair Qasim again. May Allah bless you immensely for your kind donation. All right. So let's carry on with the with the questions then. And uh, let me just answer Qasim. Salam Ustad. How are you? Hamda, what happened to Thursday podcast? Inshallah, should start next Thursday. Inshallah, should start. Next Thursday, see it was the sound that was that was causing the lagging, the sound, yeah. So, unfortunately, that was a uh, that was our little little bit of entertainment, yeah. That that we had. So the entertainment's now over, and back to reality. Okay. Um. Okay. So. No tea today, yes. Tea, blue tea today. My blue tea. Today, got the blue, nice tea today. Uh, word on the street is your desk has different height settings, like Ali Abdal. Is it true? Yes, my desk is a is a is a is a, 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 a movable desk. Yeah, 
or the raising desk. So basically, oh yeah, bye bye. Yeah, it goes up. I need to go higher than that, but go down. And this is very, very useful. Okay, so those people who are on the desk a lot, I think this is probably one of the best investments you can make, especially for your health and, and all that. Uh, I'm not an expert in English grammar, but why, uh, why Liakot has a U in it? Ignore the question. Yeah, I'm not too sure. I think it's uh, English, like the British English, they have a U after the Q. Uh, full bring salam. Is shark halal? Halal. The U in on this, his passport. In on his passport. <laughs> Q and U come together in English. Salam alaikum, mashallah, mustache party. Yes, the mustache, mustache party. How's things, Maji? Hassan Khan, mashallah. Ahla wa sahla. Salam alaikum. My mother has an ornament of a bird in the kitchen shelf and she wanted to know if it is permissible. Jazakallah khair. Uh, yeah, I mean, there is like kind of a like scope for it. If it's a small bird, a small little bird, uh, there's, there's, there's permissibility for it. Uh, however, it would be best to not have small little, these kind of ornaments in the house. But the Hanafis have said a small little object or small little image is permissible. Much nahi takach nahi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Ahla wa sahla and hadiqa. And I see you can't see the questions. I don't know why the questions are disappearing. And I'm not too happy with the question disappearing. So I'm going to put it into the old, the old format again. Yeah, so it's going to go into back into the old format. Ahla wa sahla and hadiqa. How's things? How's, uh, you, you, how's your weekend? Um, I mean, assalamu alaikum brother. Uh, 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 Ma Abdul Majid. Okay, restore chat. Jazakallah Khair Qasim, thank you very much for your kind donation to the channel. As usual, bro, you're the man. Thank you. This is a fit question during the state of illness. If one gave a Raji Talaq, are they considered Marid Far? Uh, that's they, if it's an Islamic state. If it's an Islamic state, there's a, there's a court, the Islamic court. Then, if a person was uh, in an ill state, meaning that they are dying, and that, like the doctors have told them they're only gonna live for a little while, uh, then that could possibly be something which the courts might not consider to be a talaq. Uh, but if it's not an Islamic state, if there's no Islamic courts, then it would be considered to be a talaq. Uh, Ibrar, ahla wa sahla wa alaykum as salam. Mashallah, Ibrar, ahla wa sahla. How many languages do you speak? I speak um, one, two, three, four languages, maybe five. Uh, difference between Wahhabi, Shia, and other sects? I don't know. Wallahu ala. Ask the people who call them that. Okay, let me just change this, guys. Because I'm not too happy with that chat feature. Yeah. Uh. Okay, so normal normal chat is back now. Normal chat is back. Assalamu uh, alaikum. I got a deep fit question, which is private. Can I ask via uh, email? Yes, you can ask via email, inshallah. Uh, so, the difference between, I mean, these are the kind of things that you can Google and you can find online. So, Shia are basically those who attribute themselves to uh, Shia sort of like origins, uh, uh, Sunni are those who attribute themselves to the Sahaba, um, and yeah. A Wahhabi seems to be someone who attributes themselves to Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab. Is it true that Hanafi madhab is the only madhab that allows perfumes? No. Well, I'm, I'm sure all madhabs allow perfumes. Uh, Salam alaikum. Is, since Imam Abu Hanifa was a mutakallim, no, he wasn't a mutakallim. Is Fiqh al Akbar a book on Athari? So he wasn't a mutakallim. The concept of ilmul kalam actually came about 200 years after Imam Abu Hanifa, or 100 years after Imam Abu Hanifa. So he wasn't a mutakallim. I was once uh, on your, your Twitter uh, last question and answer. You said that if a scholar says something is haram, that doesn't mean he's implying the opposite, that it's halal. Uh, I wanted to ask, can something be deemed sinful even if it can't be given haram? Yes. Yeah, it can be. According to Hanafis, definitely. 
you guys like the voiceovers here. Yeah. You guys enjoyed it. All right. Have your nice, happy, happy moment. Uh, Sam's come across your podcast, but due to technical difficulties, couldn't participate. No problem. No problem. Next week, try inshallah. Uh, yeah, I could have made an Irish accent. They had an Irish accent in this one. Salam with the Is it halal to wear imitation artificial rings outside of salah for women? Yes, it's permissible. It's permissible. So long as they're not made from pure iron, just all iron, or they're made, made from sulfur, or made from all copper. <laughs> Video is lagging for me, it's just me. And inshallah, once I get a new computer, hopefully inshallah I'm going to upgrade this computer that I've got. I'm going to get, so at the moment I'm kind of like in two minds about exactly which uh, Apple to get. I'm going to get Apple anyway. Am I going to get the new Apple with the new Apple chip in there, the M1 chip, or am I going to get the new uh, iMac 2020? So at the moment, I'm just like kind of like thinking of w what would be the one that's ideal for me. And so I don't have to kind of reinvest. Uh, one option is that other option is I just always just update my laptop or computer. Yeah, that's that's another option. Uh, man, it's uh, Afne, <laughs> you guys are crazy, man. Two main nationalities, subhan, alhamdulillah, akbar, chicken karai with roti. Basti Zera says one can can't use vinegar for istinja because it doesn't have purifying properties. But another place it says vinegar has purifying properties. Um I don't know exactly what Basti Zera says. I haven't really kind of gone through Basti Zera. Uh, but according to Hanafis, um you can't do wudu or ghusl with vinegar. But istinja, according to Abu Hanif and Abu Yusuf, you would be allowed to do istinja with vinegar. It would be permissible. Imam Muhammad would not allow it. Because Imam Muhammad says you can only use water, H2O, to purify uh, impurities. And Abu Hanifa and Muhammad, Abu Hanifa and Abu Yusuf, they say that you can use anything which is uh, purifying. Yeah, so purifying, it, it doesn't have to be something that qualifies to be used in wudu and ghusl. So Imam Muhammad says anything that is allowed to be used in wudu and ghusl, you can use in istinja. And anything that you can't use over there, you can't use in istinja. Um... You wanna buy my Apple desktop of me, yeah? Yeah, okay, if I get my computer. I mean, the Apple desktop that I've got is not gonna go for much. Cause I tried to find out the, cause I got, it's a 20 inch, 21 inch, the one that I got, 21 inch, uh, Apple iMac. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, Hamza, Bati, ahlan wa sahlan, ahlan wa sahlan. Lag's gone now, yeah, I think that was the problem. Cause I was trying to uh, integrate that um, software into there. So that was causing the. If bleeding postpartum stops before, oh, is that what it's called? Postpartum. That's a new one. Uh, before forty days, can I do ghusl and start praying? Uh, yes, according to the Hanafi school, if it stops before, you you are allowed to do it. In other words, forty days is the maximum, just like a normal sort of like bleeding cycle. Forty days is the maximum. So if the bleeding stops before forty days, then as long as it doesn't uh, recur. Um, later on, before the forty days has ended, then you're you're fine. You can you can do ghusl. You start praying. Oriental James Mufti, can I eat shrimps even though I'm Hanafi? I mean, yes, I eat shrimps. You can eat shrimps, inshallah. So this issue is not as strict as it is because of the nature of the ijtihad. Uh, in the state of nifas, can I read Surah Ikhlas, Nas, and Falak in the morning and evening protection? Um, According to the Hanafis, they say basically, you're not allowed to read Quran with the intention of Quran. But if you read Quran with the intention of dua, that's permissible. Now, can you read Quran with the intention of protection, protecting oneself? So if it's read as a dua, in that sense, like you're saying it, then there is scope to read it. I would say yes, you, you, you would be per permitted to read it in that sense. But I know some Hanafis would disagree with that because Ibn Abidin, he mentions... That's like reading Fatiha with the intention of Shifa. Some of the Hanafis have said, no, you can't read it because it's not itself a a sort of like, uh, it's it's known as a Quran to everyone. Like everyone who hears Fatiha know, knows it as Quran and they don't know it as Dua, even though it is kind of like a Dua as well. But like I said, in that kind of situation, especially if a woman wants to protect herself from, um, from you know, Hasad, jealousy and Sihar and all that kind of uh, matters, then yeah. My friend said, Shafis believe anything that comes out of the sea is halal. So even if their dad came out. <laughs> well, I don't know, how is their dad going to come out of the sea? 
Now you explain to me how do you go to the sea? Uh, Safura and Yahya give salam. Ahlan wa sahlan Safura and Yahya. MashaAllah, these are my favorite two uh, viewers today. Right, you are the special two I have. Uh, I, I knock them out and put them to bed. <laughs> uh, Allah. Ustad, how much can we spend on clothes uh, extravagance? Abdul Razak, nice to see you here. Uh, how much can you spend on clothes? So it all depends upon a person's financial status. So I would say this. If a person, for example, like can, can afford something, can buy something uh, without having to go to too much, like too much uh, trouble to try and and pay for it, then uh, I would say that's permissible. But if they have to go through too much to pay for it, like it's beyond their means, like an average people wouldn't spend that kind of stuff, then I would say, like some people might say, um, you know, if it's something that you can buy three times, then it wouldn't be extravagance. That's what some people say. If the nikah is nullified because of irtidad, does it uh, does it need ki talak No, so it does. It's not talak. It's actually fasq fasq of nikah. Yeah, so it's not. It doesn't fall under rajee or bain. It's actually fasq. Fasq simply means it's a nullification without there being talak. All the duration of woman's idda who is still a Muslim. So then, if it's a fasakh, then it's just one menstrual period. Assalamu alaikum, ahla wa sahlan khair academy. MashaAllah, MashaAllah, good to see you. Where's London Ramsey? Ra London Ra Anyone know where London Ramsey is? It's gone. I miss London Ramsey, man. I wanted to eat London Ramsey's uh, cooking. Uh, Mufti Sab, do what Ali Abdal does, get the Apple processing unit and get a massive super wide screen which he, his recent video on his desk. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking as well of doing that. Yeah, the only problem is, is, you know, the new iMac, the screen is very, very good. Like, the, 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 the it's 5K. And um, so I'm just thinking, you know, would it be worth buying another 5K screen or should I just buy 4K one? Because a lot of my footage is 4K, so I need to know exactly how so yeah, I mean, yeah, I think I'll look into that one. But the only problem is the new iMac Mini, right? The new iMac Mini, the one that's got the M1 processor. That basically, you can only get up to uh, 16 gig. Or is it 8 gig? I think it's 8 gig. 16 gig uh, RAM. And I, I need more than that for my for my work. Okay, let's check out Curious Cat. Curious Cat, before you guys start asking me what's happened to Curious Cat. All right, so... Curious cat, where are you? All right. Uh, if someone was to pay their debt, but the owner has wiped away their debt, does that person still have to? Uh, if someone was to pay their debt, but the owner has wiped away their debt, so someone's paid their debt on Monday and then someone's wiped their debt out on Tuesday, does that person still have to pay? So I think you're probably saying if someone owe someone money and that person's wavered that yeah do they have to still have to pay no they don't have to and what's the ruling on erasing someone's debt can you erase yes you can erase it's totally fine the quran even says that as well yeah it's actually considered recommended in for some some people uh to do that can you recommend uh, books on the histories of the prophets in english yes there's one called uh, stories of the quran yeah stories of the quran by by maulana hifzur rahman it's translated into english two volumes very very nice very nicely sort of like researched as well. Yeah, stories in the Quran. Uh, for Saturday Live, salam. how do we know that the Quran we have right now is exactly the same as was compiled by the third rightly uh, guided Khalif and not a single verse has changed or removed or added. If someone makes some Arabic verses in response to Quran challenge, uh, then who will decide if it's similar to Quran or not? As it's not like 2 plus 2 which is 4 universally. I'm not sure if you're aware about the holes in the narrative debate. Uh, that the, has been going around in social media. Okay, so basically, look. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't like going into these kind of topics because these are very, like these topics require a person to understand, like several, like very foundational concepts, and they take time for people to be able to understand. Like, for example, let's say someone has not studied physics, or someone has not studied chemistry or biology. And you want them to, you you want to, under, uh, that person wants to understand something at a very high level. Like imagine there's 10 steps 
and someone wants to understand something at step number 10 in physics or step number 10 in chemistry. So to take the leap from ground to top, it's, it's almost impossible in many cases. They have to understand like several steps beforehand before they can get to step 10. So this is what tends to happen with a lot of Muslims. I mean, if I ask you this question, how do we know the date today, which is the 9th of January? How do you know it's 9th of January? What if it's not? So the simple answer would be, well, everyone knows it's the 9th of January and be, people have been keeping a record of the dates throughout history. So we know that this date is the exact date. Like what if someone says, oh, but you know, last year there was like a month missing. Is it possible that someone could have omitted a month, deleted a month without anyone knowing? No, they can't. So when it comes to certainty, when it comes to certainty, like one is the certainty of mathematical certainty, right? Which is like a certainty which everyone sort of agrees upon. Then there's a certainty which we all accept, even though it's not at the same level of mathematical certainty. So for example, like if someone was to say that I'm talking to you, are you certain that I'm talking to you? And we say, yeah, well, you've, got, you've got like about, you know, uh, 30 people, you know, who are, who are, who are, who are watching this. So, but the problem is, is that if you were to look at it from a, like compare it with mathematics, you're not going to get the same level of mathematical certainty and you don't need to. Right. When you believe that your parents are your parents, you don't need mathematical certainty to say that your parents. When you know that you're going to go to work tomorrow, you don't need mathematical certainty that you're going to work tomorrow. Right. So this is why we live our lives according to a certain level of certainty. So for us, the Quran has been passed down and the way that it's been passed down, it's been memorized, it's been taught by so many hundreds and thousands of people that it's impossible for there to be ayats emitted in history without anyone spotting it. It'd be very difficult. So this is why you know, these kind of like concepts, if you're really serious about this, I would say spend some money, do a course on the history of the Quran, and it's going to be worth it. You know, you'll clarify a lot of doubts, but you're not going to understand those doubts simply having someone answer like in a question and answer. You're not going to have them cleared up. Trust me, you won't. Because these are these are like very advanced concepts, which people, you know, find it difficult to understand the concept of how we understand certainty when it comes to our, our texts. Uh, okay. Is Shar Kharid uh, al Bahia a work of utterly creed? Uh, I can't remember, you know. I haven't really kind of like gone, gone. I haven't seen that. I haven't read that book. So uh, I've come across it, but I haven't read it. So I wouldn't be able to comment. Are there any online Alim courses you would recommend? I'm not too sure. I mean, I only like recommending something that I'm absolutely certain about because I don't want someone to invest their time in, in it and then find out that it was. It was, it was uh, not worth it. But the ones that are so far is doing, I can guarantee that, that that is a very good level that I'm happy with. Can you only read the shahud in the final sitting, then give salam to end it in, when making up qada salat? Can you only read the shahud in the final sitting? I don't understand. Can you only read the shahud in the final sitting, then give salam to end it when making up qada salat? Uh, sorry, I don't understand the question. Are the following halal? Comic books, as long as they've got no nudity in there or anything like that, then it's fine. Video games, same thing. Cartoons, same thing. Also, I've heard Malikis permit 2D images. Like you said, that wearing a turban and keeping the pants above the ankles has uh, had to do with the culture of the time of the Arabs. And it's no longer necessary. Sim similarly, can we argue that the beard was also a cultural practice at the time or since there is mainstream? The difference between the beard and between the turban and these things is because there's an explicit hadith about the beard. The Prophet clearly told the Sahaba about the beard. Like there's a command, keep your beards. That's where you can't compare the beard to uh, the, the turban issue amongst most of the scholars. Yeah, so the turban, there's no instruction that the Prophet told people to wear turbans or there's no instructions that the Prophet uh, told people to wear a certain type of clothing. Yes, there's an instruction about the ankles, but there's a reason behind it. Yeah, and that reason was arrogance. So when we look at fiqh, what we're looking at is, we're looking at why did the Prophet ﷺ say what he said? So if someone was to argue that the beard was kept because it was going against the munafiks, uh, the, the mushrikeen, sorry, then some people argue that, that keeping the beard was actually in them days a way of identifying yourself uh, uh, in contrast to the, the munafiks. What movie universe would be the worst to live out of your life? All of them. <laughs> I mean, who wants to live a movie life? It's all fake. Yeah, there's no consistency in there. All movie uh, scenarios. The worst ones would be, obviously, the superhero ones. The Marvel ones and these, you know, DC ones. Those are the worst ones ever. And the horror ones. 
Yeah, because, uh, you know, obviously it's like very unfair, very sort of like uh, inconsistent. Is al ikhtiyar that you study Alam most silly? Yep, most silly. All right. Salam Ustad. You know, there are many surahs having many virtues and effects. Like reciting Surah Mulk at night is said to provide by will of Allah protection and punishment from the grave. And reciting Surah Qariya at night is said by the will of Allah saved from poverty. My question is, is it okay if if after reciting these surahs, we send the thawab of recitation uh, uh, to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and all the dead Muslims, although we're reciting them for our own good protection? Yeah, you can do that as well. Yeah, so any good action you do according to Hanafis and according to Hanbalis, you're allowed to send the reward of those actions to, to them. Yeah, and you will get the reward as well. Yeah, and the Prophet ﷺ said that, uh, you know, uh, regarding another matter, that whoever starts a good action, anyone who follows it, they get a reward and the other people get a reward. So this idea of having like dividends, having a share of people's rewards, this is also something which is, which is uh, like, you know, found in our, in our fiqh. All right, let's check out some of your questions here. Uh, Nus Nuski, uh, in your opinion, key books in order that establish evidence for the Hanafi madhab over the over other conclusions. So, this is a good question. Um, now, you see, when it comes to when it comes to, for example, like Hanafi fiqh and people like people like they want to know evidences, but I I think people don't understand uh, what evidences are. Yeah, uh, my sister's just. Showing me what I look like. Thanks, Sam. Um, so, when it comes to, like, for example, like Hanafi evidences, like, if someone says to you, I want you to explain to me biology through mathematics, right? Or I want you to explain to me biology through uh, chemistry, right? You can't really do it. Yeah. Because the evidences that you use in mathematics are not the same evidences that you use in biology and likewise in chemistry. So when it comes to Hanafi fiqh, Hanafi fiqh, the evidences that the Hanafi fiqh is based upon, yes, it is Quran and Sunnah, but the, the methodology that is adopted in order for them to be able to come up with a conclusion, right, to come out with a conclusion, this is considered to be different from the approach of the Shafi'is, for example. The Shafi'is is the famous one that a lot of people kind of like, uh, sort of like understand, which is Quran and Hadith, you put them together, you get your answer. Quran, Hadith, put them together, you get your answer. Quran, Hadith, Hanafi is not like that. Hanafi's approach, Imam Hanifa Rahna said, first of all, what I do is I take from the Quran because Imam Hanifa knew that the Quran is the ultimate book for everyone. But the Hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu is different from the Sunnah. Hadith simply means a narration that's reached us. Now, maybe the Prophet Sallallahu for example, he was speaking to his neighbor or he was speaking to a person in the masjid and someone heard it. And they passed it down. But he didn't intend that this statement is meant for everyone around the world until the Day of Judgment. But it's like leaked out, it got out, and it was passed down. So this is where hadith kind of like clashes with each other. But the sunnah, the sunnah was what the Prophet ﷺ wanted the people to understand from the deen. Like what the Prophet ﷺ wanted them to understand from the explanation of the Quran. That's what was considered to be sunnah. So he said, First of all, I take from the Quran. If I don't find it in the Quran, then I take it from the explanation of the Prophet If I don't find it from the explanation of the Prophet then I look at the Sahaba, right? And that's how I take it. So because Abu Hanifa Rahimullah was early in the time of the Sahaba, he had access to this plethora of like evidences. When he goes to the masjid, he's seeing people pray Salat like Sahaba prayed. He's seeing his teachers pray Salat like, you know, the Sahaba prayed because they were the students of the Sahaba. You know, he heard them the Sahaba's fatwas, they're answering questions. So the Sahaba's way of living was the closest living to the religion of Islam. The Sahaba's explanation of the deen was the closest that we can ever get. So their actions, their statements and fatwas, he took them as being the explanation. And that's why when we look at the Hanafi texts, like the early Hanafi texts, the early Hanafi texts are basically an embodiment, crystallization of what the, the early understanding of Islam was. Like the early understanding of the Sahaba's Islam, how they used to pray and how they used to go Hajj and how they used to kind of like do their things in them days, that was crystallized in the Hanafi text. And that's basically why the Hanafi's evidence is, is very different. Now, if you have, for example, like someone that comes later on, Hadith is passed down. It's like, for instance, like let's say, imagine like this. Imagine that there was a big event that took place, 
right, uh, in your masjid. Massive event, lots of people attended. And people were there and they heard everything and they heard the speakers and they enjoyed the event and they went back. And you asked them, can you summarize for me like from that event what you learned? They could summarize it for you. But if you have like one guy saying one thing and one guy saying one thing and one guy saying one thing, that actually might clash with each other. Say, for example, like someone says, oh, you know, the sheikh, he was wearing uh, a white hat. And someone says, oh, the sheikh was wearing a white turban. And someone says, oh, the sheikh had a white scarf on his head. There might be different, different like understandings. Yeah, someone might have been very close. Someone went very far and thought they saw something, thought they heard something. So this is why we have to be very careful between understanding what the sunnah means, explanation of the Quran by the Prophet ﷺ, and, and the narrations that were passed down by people over history. So people are prone to mistakes. That's why we've got to be very careful with the hadith. But the early understanding of the sunnah that was embodied in the life of the Sahaba, they, there's not going to be mistakes in there. Right? So that's why, you know, when people say, what's the evidences? So if you want it from a, a Hanafi evidence point of, point of view in that, se in, that, in that sense, then you're going to be looking for the fiqh explanation, basically. You're not going to be looking for hadith explanations. Although some of the Hanafis do sort of like use hadith explanations. So you got books like Tahawi, uh, you know, uh, Tajdeed by Imam Quduri. You got um, explanation of, uh, uh, you know, Muhtasar al-Tahawi by Ajassas, right? So these are the early books that actually focused on expl explaining and there were some evidences from hadith. Okay, not buying the desktop for the future features, Ustaz. Uh, buying for the barakat. Gonna rub it every day. Allah, subhanallah, subhanallah. That's it, bro. That's it. You can be, you, you're gonna start like a new madhab, yeah? Easiest way to memorize all the surah names in the Quran. Um, best way to memorize them is a path method. So use in your head, like start from your bedroom. And in your mind, imagine you're going outside your bedroom, you're going down your stairs, you're going throughout your house, you're going leaving your house, you're walking to the, to the mosque. So in every step of the way, put something there that reminds you. For example, like start, uh, imagine this now, close your eyes, imagine that you're on your bed. So imagine there's this big, massive fat cow that's just squashing your bed. And then imagine there's a guy that you know called Imran, right? You know, you might, you might know some Imran. And imagine that Imran is like pulling the cow's horns and just like laughing. And then you might see, for example, like a group of women who are in like hijabs, right? Who are, uh, you know, uh, uh, slapping the cow, hitting the cow. Yeah. And then you might see that Maida table. Yeah. All of a sudden this cow is back legs are hitting this table that's full of food. And then you might see after that, for example, like these uh, uh, small little cows, small little miniature cows uh, that are just running all over the table like mice. Uh, and then you might see... Um, yeah, like for example, like you know, some some guy called Arif. You might go know some guy called Arif, and Arif is trying to catch each of those cows. So you see that now. Now you remember, didn't you? So you go, okay. Ah, oh, first surah is Fatiha, then it's Bakara, then it's Imran who was pulling the head, and then it's the women that was slapping the cow, and then it was the cow that was hitting the table, Maida, and then it was Anam because there's cattle, and then it was Maid, uh, then it was um, you know, and then it goes on like the Araf. So that's how I would memorize the list. Would you say there's a difference between, for instance, Turkish Hanafis and Pakistan Hanafis? Definitely. Certain Masail. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Umar, ahla wa sahlan. Welcome. What's the concept of Qutub and Abdal, Shaykh? Does it have any reality to it? If yes, what what are the, their signs? Um, I would say, look, it's... Uh, so, this idea that there are some, for example, like very, very pious people in the world who might, you know, you know have some very strong connection with Allah. We there, There's no sort of like... They're not, they're, there's no sort of like superheroes in the world in that sense. Yeah. No kind of superheroes in that world. Uh, it simply just means like there's someone out there who's only Allah knows who they are. Right. We don't know who they are at all. You can claim someone. You might say I'm one <laughs> yeah, if you like. But, you know, who knows? Allah knows best if, if there are any of any anyone out there who who is that. That's all it is. Right. And, and that's it, basically. So we don't even need to go investigate who these people are. Maybe it's your parents might be one. Maybe it's your next-door neighbor. Maybe it's someone. Maybe there's no one. Yeah, so these kind of terms, uh, I would say no need to investigate them. It's like knowing who's who's forgiven, who's been forgiven. Who knows who's been forgiven? Uh, who, who's going to go Jannah? There might be someone in your family that's going Jannah. Maybe you're going Jannah. Right? Maybe I'm going Jannah. Maybe we're all going Jannah, inshallah. Yeah, may, Allah, may Allah take us all to Jannah. 
Uh, but we don't need to worry about who's going Jannah and who's not going Jannah. Just get on with your life. Carry on, I would say. So is seafood haram and confused? Please explain. So according to the Hanafis, they say that anything in the, in the sea which resembles a fish is permitted. And the reason is because in the Quran, Allah says all dead creatures are haram. All dead creatures. Hurrimat alaykum mayta. So therefore, whether it's living on the land or sea should be haram. But Allah has also said that the, the hunted animal of the sea is permitted. Now what does that mean? Does that mean any animal in the sea is permitted? Or otherwise? So the Prophet ﷺ in a hadith has said that those animals uh, which are fish, samak, they're allowed. Now what did he mean by fish? So Hanafis have tried to understand this and they've said it most likely only refers to creatures that are fish-like shaped. That have like a fin, a tail and it moves around the water in that way. So those are the ones that are allowed. Is interest in games allowed to start? In, is interest in games? Interest as in like, you know, uh, like being interested in, in playing games? Is that what you're asking? Does the groom and bride have to be present for validation of nikah? Uh, no, they don't have to be. You can have someone on, on their behalf being there, but someone on their behalf has to be there. Aspiring, mashallah, jazakallah khair for your kind donation. May Allah bless you. Thank you very much. I hope everything is well up north. You're enjoying the snow. Jazakallah khair. Really appreciate it, man. Really appreciate uh, your kind donations. Alhamdulillah. Um, my hair is going over the place. Uh, okay, why does Indo Pax just call themselves Hanafis instead of the Ubundis or Belvis? It's like. Why do some doctors call themselves like Oxford graduates and some call themselves? That's what it is, right? So like having a term or a name or a label or anything like that isn't really problematic unless it's causing divisions, right? And there's like many scholars who, who don't like calling themselves by these names. Like Mufti Taki Usmani, I mean, I've heard him myself. He said that his father actually told him off for ever writing next to his name, the Ubundi. Um, so, I mean, these kind of things, some people kind of use it as ammunition to fight each other. But we're all Muslims at the end of the day, right? But the Sahaba were all Sahaba, they're all Muslims, but Allah called them Muhajireen and Ansar. Yeah, so those terms, as long as they don't cause like friction between each other, then it's okay to have terms, right? You might say, for example, like British Muslims, French Muslims, um, and so forth. Curious cat, yeah, curious cat. What kind of tea is that? Blue tea. It's called blue tea. Aspiring, thank you very much again. Jazakumullah, I really appreciate it. Allah, may Allah bless you. May Allah put barakah in your time, in your, in your efforts. Uh, M Mullah, mashallah, mashallah, jazakumullah khair. Thank you very much, M Mullah. You are the man. May Allah bless you. May Allah put barakah in your time, in your efforts, in your family, uh, in your nikah. Uh, thank you very much. Really appreciate it, man. I like that fox as well. Uh, Abu Safura, Jazakallah khair du'as, Kamran's mom who is in hospital, may Allah give her shifa kamil, make du'a for May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give her shifa kamil and may Allah give shifa kamil uh, to um, all those out there who are actually in hospital suffering from whatever sort of like uh, problem that they have uh, So Kamran's mom who is in hospital having a heart condition, may Allah give her shifa kamil and give sabr to the family This is a very difficult time as well, especially when your mother Uh, that explains Zakhla Khair. What is the wisdom behind a woman who has had menopause having to sit in Idda? Is it uh, Amr Ta'abudi alone? Yes. Yeah. So, so see, sometimes what happens is, let me explain something to you guys. Sometimes what happens is in fiqh, we might have like a ruling and that ruling is based on a reason. So when that reason is there, the ruling is there. And when that reason is not there, the ruling is not there. For example, like um, a person can drink vinegar Right, but can't drink alcohol, even though vinegar is made from alcohol. Right? It's like transformed from alcohol. Or for example, like uh, grape juice molasses, right? Which is like, transformed from alcohol, becomes vinegar, then becomes molasses. So the Prophet ﷺ allowed vinegar, he allowed molasses, but he didn't allow alcohol. Why? Because alcohol is prohibited because it intoxicates. So therefore, if alcohol does not intoxicate, then it would be allowed. Right? If al alcohol did not have the intoxicating sort of like component in there, it would be fine, like any other drink. However, certain rulings in Islam are such that we don't really kind of know the reason behind it. We know the wisdom behind it. So if the wisdom is there, the ruling is there. If the wisdom is not there, the ruling is still there. Yeah. So for example, like a woman covering herself. So the woman covering herself, 
for example, wearing the hijab, is based upon the wisdom behind it is to safeguard her from the harm of other people. Right? So anyone trying to harass her, harm her. But that's not the reason for why. The reason is something we don't really know 100%. But Allah has told us, and then we act upon it. Or for example, like why we pray five times a day. Wisdom behind praying five times a day is remembrance of Allah. But we don't know what the exact reason is. Right? Some of the things are just not told to us or they're beyond our understanding. Why is pig haram? Wisdom behind it would be things like this animal is like a dirty animal in the sense that it kind of like eats its own. So like feces and anything it kind of comes across. That's a wisdom. But not the reason. We don't know the reason 100%. So some of the rule, most of the rulings in our, our fiqh, we know the reason behind them. And many of them, we don't know the reason. Yeah, so this is why, you know, you got, you have this sort of like... So this is why, yeah, Amr Ta'abudi. Amr Ta'abudi means where you have a matter and you don't know the exact sort of like reason. What's the big difference in the meaning of these two verbs? Yashmilu wa yashtamilu. Yashmilu, shamil, yashmilu can mean like someone who encompasses something. So like, let's say for example, like I get 10 guys and I put them into the football game. There's a football game going on and I get 10 guys and I say, come on guys, get in the football game. So I could be the shamil, shamala, shamaltuhum. And yashtamilu is a verb which only is used for that particular thing participating in that. So for those guys participating, without mentioning me making them participate, you'd call it yeshtamilu. Why is zakat based on silver and nisab? Um, it's a ikhtilaf. Some say it's based on silver, some on gold. So Hanafis have a difference of opinion on this. Uh, so, you know, these were the two metal bimetallic currencies in them days. So it made sense that the rulings would be based upon uh, upon this. Uh, aspiring salam, hope you're well. Zakallah khair aspiring, really appreciate it. Mashallah, may Allah bless you, may Allah bless your family and and uh, you know all the streets of of Bradford. I wanted to ask, as a female who works with brain uh, trauma X-rays, to what extent is it permissible to examine a male's head? Uh, I want to laugh there, right? I want to examine male's head. <laughs> I was about to say there's nothing in there <laughs> to examine. <laughs> But can't say that, can't say that, guys. Yeah, no offense to the guys out there. So to what extent? So basically, you're allowed to examine, if it's your field, right? Uh, you're allowed to examine examine their heads. Nothing's wrong with examining their heads. Uh, the question would come, it would be, for example, like uh, examining the private area. So between the navel and between the knees. If there's no need to examine it, to check it, then it wouldn't be allowed to check. But if there is a need, for example, like a checkup, or you need to kind of do some tests or something, and there's a need to check between the navel and the knees, then it's permissible. As it consists of examining very closely and pr pressing down on the nerves with the hands, etc. Yes, so it, I assume it would be needed for to, to know the health of that individual or to even like help them treat them for a particular medical uh, issue that they're suffering from. So then that would allow, like things that would normally not be allowed would become permissible under those circumstances. Yeah, close contact in that sense. So even if you have to be in a room alone with them, also that would be permissible as well. Because for medical purposes, Imam Abu Yusuf rahimahullah's position is, as long as the person knows that most likely this method is going to help them, treat them, then it's allowed. So that would include everything from tests being done, uh, operations, treatments, um, you know, sort of like interviews and all that. Uh, Muhammad, yes it is. Mufti Sahib, do you have a course on Quranic Sciences? Uh, I have one... Yeah, I do, you know, actually. Actually, I do. Do I? Yeah, yeah, I do. So if you check in Uruk, Uruk, there's one over there. I think it's called... Let me check what it's called. Yeah. Uruk.com uh, It's called... What is it called? Do I have one? Um, Mulk, Nusha, uh, Hay, Instalments, uh, Malaga. Yeah, I think I had one, you know. Um, I can't remember, I'm sure I had one. Elements of Faith. No, actually, I didn't have one. I didn't do like a full detailed one. I did parts of it in Elements of So if you guys want to check out my YouTube channel and my, my website called uruk.com, I've got like loads of courses on there if anyone's like interested in doing different types of courses, or you can share it with other people as well. Uh, right. 
Okay, so so many questions, questions. Right, according to you, key Hanafi books in order that mention fiqh Hanafi madhab over the madhab. X Ru'us al Masail of Zamakhshari. Yeah, Ru'us al Masail of Zamakhshari isn't really kind of like a Dalil book. It's it's more of like kind of like his his kind of like fatwas or his kind of naqal of Masail. Uh, so do we believe that Allah Ta'ala forgave and is pleased with all the Sahaba and the Sahabi would uh, mean anyone who saw the Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Yeah, that's what we would believe. So we would believe, we believe that Radiallahu Anhum, Allah is pleased with them and Allah has forgiven them for the, the mistakes and sins that they, they committed. Um, and so we don't deal with them. As in, we're not like a hundred percent, Allah could hold them for account on the Day of Judgment. That's up to Allah. Not like the Prophets. Allah has totally, we know hundred percent. But we believe with a lot of certainty that the Allah has forgiven the Sahaba and on the Day of Judgment. And this is why when, for example, like Sahaba had clashes amongst themselves, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, when someone asked him, why don't we discuss these kind of like arguments of the Sahaba and take sides? He said that Allah has saved our swords from their blood. Then we should save our tongues from their, from their like, like slander or from their backbiting. Uh, we, shouldn't, we shouldn't discuss them in a negative way. So this is why, you know, we just leave it to Allah. Uh, right. In Medina, Munawwara, uh, can we say salam to Rasulullah on behalf of the dead, on behalf of those who haven't asked us to convey? Um, so you see, it's like, again, it's like the same, the same rules would apply if someone didn't ask you to give salam to someone else, but you went up to them and say someone was giving you salam. I mean, like, it's, it's not the kind of the truth, is it? So I would avoid that kind of practice uh, because there seems to be some sort of like, like a lie there, deception there. Yes, I mean, you giving salam and sending the reward of that to that person, that's a, that, that would be permissible according to the Hanafis. That would be permissible. But if someone has not given salam, if you kind of assume someone would have given salam, then yeah, there's scope there. Easiest way to memorize all the surah names of the Quran. Yeah, answer that one. Also, when performing Nafal Tawaf, can we perform it on behalf of multiple Marhumeen or can we only perform it on behalf of one? Uh, multiple, yeah. Yeah, so Nafal Tawafs, you can make intention or Nafal Rakat, according to Hanafis, Isal Thawab uh, can be used for that. Also, in your opinion, studying the Alimiya course, would you say it's better when studied in Urdu, Arabic medium rather than English? Uh, no, I would say. I would say study in the language you're most comfortable in. Do not force yourself to have to go through another language to get to Arabic. Right? Study in the language that you're most comfortable. Because what's going to happen is you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna like uh, have to, you're gonna like miss out on a lot of important things. Like for example, you know me, I studied the Alimiya course like majority of it through Arabic uh, in the in the beginning, and I personally think that it was a mistake on my behalf. I mean, Alhamdulillah, I benefit a lot, but I would. If I had to go back in time, I would actually have studied the first at least year or two in English thoroughly. And I, I would have benefited a lot more, I would say. Yeah, I would have benefited a lot more. Because, uh, I mean, later on, I managed to make everything up again because, you know, I, 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 I kind of studied privately with a teacher and or a few teachers. And I kind of made up everything that I kind of uh, felt for, for, for felt that I was, I was missing in the early years. I, I made it all up. Uh, but alhamdulillah, but a lot of people don't have the opportunity. They think they have to go through like Urdu or something. No, you don't have to. Study in your own language that you can understand it best, right? The first few years, I would say, thoroughly understand what what's happening. And then after that, you know, the rest of it is just going to become a piece of cake. But if you're going to sort of like, like you, some of you guys probably experienced this who've studied Alimiya course in the beginning and had to study it through Urdu, where Urdu is not your language. You probably realized that when you study something through a different language, there's like, multiple problems that you're going to face. One is you have to overcome that language and then you have to overcome the problems of trying to understand the masala. So you got like not just one problem, you're actually facing multiple problems. Whereas a person who's directly understanding it through without going through these sort of uh, uh, other other languages, they're understanding it directly, they're benefiting more. So they're benefiting 80-90% whereas you're only benefiting 30-40% of, of trying to understand the text. Saqib Masood alaykum as-salam ala wa sahlan. Could there be some hadith that we were sahih in Abu Hanifa's time but late on? Yes, definitely. Yeah. So this can't exactly happen where because of chains, multiple chains, a hadith at the time of Imam Malik could have been sahih 
But then people who narrated from Imam Malik might have been weak, weak people. And because of them being in the chain, they rendered the entire hadith of unacceptable by later scholars. This ha actually happened many times. Salaam alaikum. Read something starting that each letter in Arabic has a meaning. Sheen indicates spreading words. Sheen, uh, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Yeah, so if you watch my series, I've actually explained this in some of my series. If you watch the Quran in depth. Yeah, I've actually I've touched on this. Yeah, so check that out. Ya yeah, Allah. Alright, let's check out some curious cat then. Just curious cat it. Ya yeah, Allah. You know what? Subhanallah. I have no idea how you, some of you guys come out with all these questions. Like, is it like you're coming out with the questions off the cuff? Like, are you just kind of being inspired of these questions there and then? Or is it something that you've actually had all week in your head? How do you have so many questions? I mean, subhanAllah, you guys are like amazing students of knowledge. Okay, three quick questions. Number one, moisturizer is made out of non-Zabiha animal fat. Can they be used? So I don't exactly know how moisturizers are made here, so I can't answer on that. But I can answer on, for example, like soap. So the Fuqaha have mentioned that soaps that contain fat of animals that are not slaughtered in the halal way are permissible because that fat actually goes through a process of change and it... Uh, it, it becomes like permissible to use. So that was regarding soaps. If that same procedure is found in moisturizers, like for example, it contains animals fat from other, but the process in which that it goes through in the laboratories or in the in the in the production um, sort of like um, uh, what's it um, in, the, in the in the manufacturing production, then it would become permissible to use. But I don't exactly know how moisturizers are made, so I wouldn't be able to answer that one. Shoes made out of non-halal leather, can we wear them? Yes, as long as they're not made from pig. And if you say all leather you're allowed to use, irrespective of where it came from, apart from pigs. Leather sofas made out of non-zabiha goats and pig, not pig, but anything else Hanafi say you can use. Right? Because the Hanafis basically say that because there was leather being used in the time of the Sahaba and the Prophet ﷺ, and a lot of it was not from zabiha, it was there from before Islam, but they were still being used. That shows that the leather itself is exempt from the ruling of the animal. And they say that the reason for this is the, the impure moisture that's in the leather is, has been extracted. And how do we know it's been extracted? Because the leather lasts for years and years and years. right? If the moisture was in there, the, leather, the, the animal's hide, the raw hide, would only last for a short while and then rot away, like any meat rots away if it's left outside the fridge. <sighs> okay. Also, can we respectfully... Uh, Respectful, uh, can we use respectful pictures to represent prophets of Allah for da'wah to non-Muslims? If we don't have pictures, they don't listen to audio, I would say no. No, you can't use them. And the reason is a lot of the scholars around the world have almost like in today's times have given like fatwas impermissibility of using images for prophets. And the reason simply is, is that we cannot believe any sort of defect with regard regarding a prophet of Allah. Right? We can't accept any sort of defect. Uh, even though we know that they were born from biological parents, most of them were. So, so you know, we have that sort of like understanding, the human side of them. But when it comes to the whatever Allah has mentioned in the Quran, we accept that. But if we were to depict them in the image of others, you know, we, we may depict them in such a way that is degrading. Like there might be some shape of the nose or something or size of the, of the head or anything. And, you know, these kind of things can have an impact on people as well. As in, they start to have... You know, like when you when you kind of give an image to someone, it can have a sort of like a long lasting uh, negative effect on some people. And we don't want that. So we just leave it as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned it. And there's nothing like in the Quran or in the Hadith to say that you can't have these images. But it's the idea is the, the sort of like disrespect that would be shown to them. And then the other issue is, is that many scholars prohibit the drawing of images anyway. So then they'd be like, you're prohibited from drawing images and then you're making the profits in the images. So then that would be something that would be impermissible as well um, and yeah if the, see the thing is how far do we have to go to try and get non-muslims to accept Islam how far should we go right um, you know should we go so far to hold a bottle of alcohol in our hands to kind of like talk to them even though we're not going to drink it just to make them feel a bit more comfortable should we go so far to shave off our beards just to make them feel more comfortable to accept Islam should we go so far to take off our hijab I think we don't have to go that far there should be a limit for people who are given da'wah to other people, how far they would go with this, right? And not a non-Muslim wouldn't understand, right? You know, non-Muslims. If you told them, look, I can't depict my the prophets I believe in uh, in image form, and most of them would understand. 
they wouldn't have to see like like why is this for why are you is it haram or dislike to watch TV series in which some characters play the role of Sahaba? Yes, Sahaba is different. So the Sahaba would be permissible according to a lot of scholars. I would say not all of them, but a lot of the scholars, especially with the new Umar series that was made, they, they say that that is permissible. Um, the only problem that they had was like some of the actors were well known for, for making like films that were lewd kind of like films or scenes that were not appropriate as a Muslim. So what if someone knows that actor from before? Imagine like Tom Cruise or imagine like you know, I don't know, Julia Roberts or someone uh, famous, like the well-known films they've made and they've done like films that are totally inappropriate and they make certain, like, they're made into certain actors and actresses of Sahaba. Then it doesn't, it doesn't fit because you're going to have that negative image always associated with that particular Sahabi or Sahabia. So some of them were against it. And this is why when they made the Umar series, they actually had to sign a contract. Some of the major like actors who played Omar and others that for, set, for I don't know, for about 10 or years, was it, 15 years, they weren't allowed to play any roles that was against like an Islamic role model. So that it kind of like disappears from the minds of the people about this individual. Is replying to the Iqama considered Sunnah or Mustahab? According to Hanafi's Mustahab. Yeah, all right, almost finished there. Almost finished. Almost finished. Um... Ya Allah, Allahu Akbar, walillahi alhamd. Okay, let's check this out then. Right, so... Um, uh, Saqib, during Ghusl, I heard some say that the putting water in the nose is fine and some say that it has to reach the soft bone. Soft bone basically is up there, so you sniff it slightly. Yeah, so you, you should sniff it slightly. Yeah, just slightly. Unless you got waswasa, then it's fine. Just put it in your nose. Is it okay if we throw away the papers, forms, etc., having the name Muhammad in English written on there? Yes, it would be permissible. As long as if you feel it's bad, then don't do it. But generally, I wouldn't have an issue with 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 that because it's not really. I don't see it as disrespectful in that sense. Uh, but some communities might consider something very disrespectful. Anything that falls on the floor, they consider disrespectful. Um, but I would say it's fine because it cre creates a lot of hardship and difficulty as well because the name Muhammad, the name Allah or Abdul Rahman or you know, these kind of names are written in a lot of places. Uh, you know what it says on this? It says, Shiba dog writing with a brush, writing number one on a piece of paper. So that, I thought it was a fox, but it's actually a dog. Nice explanation on the Hanafi fiqh and how it, it worked. Zakhla khair, alhamdulillah. Riba in games, Ustad. How would you do riba in games? I don't understand. How would there be riba in games? I really love the Hanafi fiqh, not to sound derogatory, but Shafi Madhab sounds way too harsh. I like the distinction between the Sunnah and the Hadith, and the Hadith not being top priority. Yeah, so that's that's something that, if you're interested in knowing more about this, what I would suggest is try to read uh, or study Usul fiqh, Hanafi Usul fiqh. Um, and on my uruk, uruk .com, uh, I've got like a, a few courses on there as well. In Arabic grammar, under the mansubat, we have hal. Uh, yeah, hal. Du'as for Kamran's mum. Definitely. Zakallah khair, Abu Safura. May Allah bless you and your family and uh, Safura as well. Randomly, a fish don't need to be slaughtered. Does that mean uh, we can't can eat fish products from McDonald's, etc.? Yes. Technically, as long as they got no other extra haram ingredients added into it or made in oil that's, you know, haram, then otherwise it'd be fine. How to build confidence in speaking, public speaking. Basically, the main thing you have to remember, Mudassir, is you have to just jump in the deep end and just speak to people. You got to break it. And the example that one guy gave, I remember once, it was, you know, if you drive on the motorway and you see horses, right, in the fields, why aren't those horses, like, scared of the cars? So basically the reason is because the horses, initially when they were put there, they probably were afraid of the cars moving. But after a while, they become so used to it that they have no fear. So a lot of people, when they're scared of open public speaking, it's because of the fear of the audience. right? If you're alone, you've got no fear. So you have to break that fear. And the only way to break it is you have to always expose yourself, just giving talks, just a few minutes, talk to your family, ask them, can everyone just listen to my little talk and give a talk? And you'll find it embarrassed. But that's how you're going to have to do it. 
I mean, I remember the first time I gave a talk, I was just so shaking, embarrassed. I just was sweating and, you know, it was just like the talk just lasted for like, you know, a few minutes. Yeah, because it was just too embarrassing. Assalamu alaikum. Collagen powder is permissible? Collagen powder. What's, what, I, don't, I, don't, I don't exactly know how collagen powder is, uh, is produced. I mean, these kind of questions, if you kind of know exactly the kind of procedure, that would help me. So I don't know the chemical procedure of how it's actually produced in the laboratories. So I wouldn't be able to give you an answer on that. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Is collagen powder is permissible for consumption? Again, you'd have to explain to me how collagen powder is. Uh, AS, in Arabic grammar, under the mansubat, we have hal. We are given the example of ja'a zaydun rakiban, which makes sense that it comes under the mansubat, as the word rakiban is mansub, but the sentence... Uh, in a, com a conversation, I was told that wali is required for a woman. However, I cited the Hanafi view. They responded with clear evidence from hadith. Yeah, so basically, again, this is another sort of like problem that people will have when it comes to trying to reconcile evidences. So the Hanafis basically say that, look, in the Quran, no way is it mentioned that a woman needs a wali to get married, right? In fact, the Quran actually says that hatta tanki has zawjin and she marries. And that's the Abu Hanifa Rahimullah's argument is that, look, a woman herself is like a man in the sense that she has the right to make her own decisions in buying and selling. So therefore, logic would say that she should have her own rights in being able to uh, marry herself off as well. Right? So this is why Abu Hanifa Rahimullah's argument is that the wali isn't necessary. However, uh, the hadith itself, first of all, the hadith, um, you know, from a, like an usul hadith point of view, the way that the Hanafis an analyze it is different. Uh, but the other issue is is that the hadith itself does not necessarily like the hadith itself doesn't necessarily mean that it's impermissible for a woman to marry herself off this was something considered to be something that was a practice uh, where a woman was marrying herself off without the sort of like um, like the, without the sort of like uh, consent of her family right which where it was going to cause problems for the family Yes, that's what even Abu Hanifa Rahimullah says. If a woman marries herself off to someone who is uh, not suitable for at all, right? So a woman marries herself off to a, you know, someone who's addicted to, to drugs and is going to destroy her life, then her family can intervene, go to courts, and get the marriage uh, annulled. So, this is again, what I would suggest is uh, boxing. You have to study usul fiqh to understand this. So, like I said, I've got a course on myuruk.com. Study usul fiqh, you'll understand how Hanafis approach when it comes to hadith. So if a Hanafi has a hadith that goes against what the Quran says, apparently what the Quran says, the Hanafis will take what the Quran says and will interpret the hadith in, a, in an appropriate way. Alhamdulillah, uh, alhamdulillah, zaqla khair, amullah. In what instances would you use khilal and athna? Um... I mean, I think they'd be used the same way. I'm not. I'm not too sure of, of the exact. Uh, is music permissible? Uh, yes and no. Yeah. Yes and no. I would say. And this again, it's another long question, uh, and I've mentioned the answer to this many times before. But the reason I'm saying yes and no is because if the music contains lewd words, if the music is something which is uh, uh, accompanied by musical instruments. Uh, and uh, women's uh, singing to non mahram men, then that would be not permissible. But if the music is there, which is uh, for, for example, a particular purpose, then there may be scope for it. That's the short answer, basically. Uh, are there any specific non Islamic books you are reading at the moment? Uh, at the moment, no, because I'm quite busy tied up with, with some other like reading and my, my teaching. So, not at the moment. Um, yeah. Okay. Have some tea, guys. Allah. Um, in a conversation, I was told over. Okay, we did that one. Uh, RK Beg. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Liaqat, how are you? Alhamdulillah, Rais. Been missing you lives. Allah made it to. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. What would at taraib mean considering turb? means dirt uh, means earthiness 
الترابية uh, uh, I can't exactly remember well, One second, let me just Give me a sec Let me just have a little check Because I can't off the top of my head, I can't remember The, the root word for this But I'll just do a quick check Source just to make sure. Okay, I'm going to have to look this one up a bit later on. So if you emailed me the question, I'll have to uh, look it up. Uh, yeah, because I've got to understand where the word Torab actually comes from. Yeah, so it's all, it's all basically to do with uh, Torab. Uh, yeah so oh yeah so basically what what turab actually comes from something that kind of like small little things that come together the arabs call it turab so the taraib that is from the word tariba which actually refers to like the things inside your body that come together your liver your heart all these kind of like organs that are very closely packed together it's called the taraib the tariba so it's like the so like the essential components you can say that's where you're from that yeah which means that small things that come together like components in nahu under mansuba the type hal we are given the example of the hal being a jumla ja'a zaydan wa huwa raqibun in a wa huwa raqibun in apparent this is wa huwa raqibun doesn't look mansub will we say it's mahallan mansub yes mahallan mansub so wa haliya and then all of that wa haliya is huwa is mubtada raqibun is khabar and all that jumla itself so jumlas are different types. Laha mahal min al-Arab, wa laysa laha mahal min al-Arab. And this is a jumla which has mahal. So this is this is the hal of the fi'l jaa, the huwa inside the fi'l jaa. You're yeah, describing the fi'l. Uh, so I was reading that some shaha, uh, some sahaba and ulama would do wudu with cold water in winter as bearing hardship for Allah Taala. But I've also read that Allah Taala doesn't need us. Uh, go through hardship so how do so we simply say this was their own personal ijtihad personal ijtihad that's fine but it's not something that allah would we we don't believe that allah would expect them to do that yeah so for example like you know you might get someone who will let's say you know um, pray salat on bare ground and say i prefer it like this that's fine but we but we can't say that this is something which is encouraged by the sharia so this is their own personal preference. Many Sahaba had own personal preference. That some of them would not carry money. Some of them would not save money for the next day. But even many Sahaba you know, disagreed with them and told them off. Like uh, Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu, the famous incident of Uthman radiallahu anhu, where Abu Dhar would tell off Sahaba not for, for, for saving money for the next day. And he would tell people to have tawakkul. And then many of the Sahaba you know, said, look, we can't do that. That's, that's not the way that the Quran tells us. If the Quran did not allow saving of money, why did the Quran have rulings of zakat? And zakat, you have to have money for a year's savings. Uh, are you have the Quran? No. 
not a half as I wish I was. Uh, especially those men who can't remember any dates. Definitely. I'm one of them. I am the worst person at remembering dates. I can just about remember how old I am. Uh, do you like memorizing? Are you memorizing anything at the moment? Uh, I mean, I like memorizing, but I don't really kind of focus too much of my time on like specific type of memorizing. Uh, more like understanding memorizing. I like. Can you explain Imam Abu Yusuf's statement that the limb is washed when two drops fall off it? Does this mean that we just need two drops of water on each limb? So basically, no. So basically, when you wash the limb, sometimes when you put water on the limb, the, the water is spread, but nothing drops off. But he's saying that you have to pour water on your limb in such a way that there has to be excess of two drops at least fall off the limb when you wash it. Rehbor Rahman, Assalamu Alaikum, hope you're well. If a Musalli keeps his prayer mat at the front of the masjid because we're praying with gaps because of COVID, if he cuts the saf and gets his prayer mat, is that permissible? Hal um, Jews? Again, as long as he doesn't go in the place of sajda, there would be permissibility for it. So as long as he's not stepping between his feet and the place of the, the guy's feet and place of sajda, he'd be allowed to go and get it. Are you imam at any mosque? No, not, I don't like being an imam. Yeah, that's like that's like the last job I want to do. I'm not an imam guy. Uh, I'm not a public. Basically, I'm not a very very public guy. Yeah, I I find it difficult to be able to deal with the public. Um, would you say reading Quran or translation should be done first? Uh, Reading Quran. Yeah, reading. First of all, learn how to read the Quran and then tr translation. Or you could do the both at the same time. Any advice to students, uh, students or Muslims in general on their routine? So, I mean, generally, I would say, look, do your five times Salat as a Muslim. Every day, read at least a page or two of the Quran or listen to it at least. Do some dhikr in the morning, do some dhikr in the evening. Alhamdulillah, that should be fine for your, your ibadat, right? Try to fix yourself that routine and try to keep it up. If you're finding you're doing a lot of dhikr, but you're finding that you're not able to do it for more than a week or two, then cut down. Don't worry, cut down. Don't force yourself to do too much. Five times a lot, you have to do that. And as for studying knowledge, I would say uh, try to focus on uh, reading a lot and trying to like benefit from your teacher in that thing that you can't benefit if you were alone at home right so benefit from your teacher focus all your your benefit uh, from the teacher and those things that you can get from your teacher if you're there that you can't get if you are alone at home so there's so a lot of things you can get alone for example like finding a word you don't have to go to your teacher and say to your teacher what does this word mean you can look it up right you, you you're you wasting valuable time that you could be actually ask, asking your teacher that's the first thing number two is when you prepare your lesson, have a list of questions you need to ask your teacher about that lesson that you can't figure out yourself. Get used to the habit of coming out with questions and writing them down and showing your teacher. I would say that would be very beneficial. Uh, can Salah be prayed in a room with a fish tank in it? Yes, definitely. Definitely. Uh, do you know about Circle of Influence? I've heard about it. I've heard about it. Uh, shed some light on there. Uh, the, from the woods, Jazakallah Khair, MashaAllah, MashaAllah from the woods. May Allah bless you. Thank you very much for your kind support of this channel. Uh, may Allah keep you happy and your family and your studies and your ibadah and your, your barakah and your, and your time as well. I mean, Jazakallah Khair, really appreciate it, man. Really appreciate it from the woods. Um, okay, let's check out some curious cat ones. Okay, uh, the likes of Ibn Hazm, Rahimahullah, uh, were of the belief that the linguistic excellence of the Quran is not. Uh, what is miraculous but rather he had some other Muslims he and some other Muslims held the belief that the Quran is miraculous but in its content contents as the Quran gives information about past nations and about the universe and in 7th century Arabia information about the past nations universe could not have been could not have come from any source except Allah Surah Al-Kawthar is the shortest surah in the Quran we are, we are aware that Allah set a challenge in Surah Baqarah to bring just one surah like, like a surah found in the Quran but Surah Al-Kawthar and itself does not comment on past nations or anything about the universe. How then did the likes of Ibn Hazm explain the, the nothing with like when the shortest surah, which we know to be Surah Al-Kawthar, uh, can be brought forth by individuals who want to, to take up the challenge? Now, 
I haven't really kind of thoroughly like read all of Ibn Hazm's arguments with regards to uh, the like, yeah, jazz of the Quran. Like I haven't read that. I've read like, certain certain aspects of what he said and some of his books. Uh, but I mean, see, when it comes to, for example, like his argument, one of one of the arguments that people like him and others like hold is the concept of the sirf. They hold that to be something very strong. So the sirf basically simply means is that Allah has stopped human beings from being able to replicate the Quran. Like anyone who tries to replicate the Quran will easily be spotted. Like will not be able to come out with a with a, with a, with a, with like a Quran that's like it or a chapter that's like it. So it's not that the humans don't have the ability. It's that Allah had, when He revealed the Quran, He took that ability away from them. So imagine, for example, like there's this amazing sort of like technology that humans find, alien technology, let's say. And let's say the aliens tap into the humans' minds and they they like switch off the ability for them to be able to figure out how to replicate this. That's basically what self means. That's the argument that they use. Again, this is like a very sort of like technical sort of like question, which I would say, which would require a person, again, it's like the steps. This would be like a question at the level six or level seven on the steps. It would require a person to understand like basic concepts before they can actually reach this. Another argument that I would say in response to this would be that um, when people say, for example, it's the contents of the Quran, it doesn't necessarily mean it's just the stories and, and other things. It's also, for example, like, you know, the Quran, the way that the Quran came out with the Surah and, for example, like mentioned specific individuals in that Surah, it mentioned specific virtues in that Surah, it mentioned specific context in that Surah. These are also things which are very miraculous as well. So, for example, like, Inna A'atayna Kul Kawthar is like the Prophet ﷺ in a time when he was going through lots of hardship. So certain miraculous things can actually only be seen later on. Yeah, the miracle miracle of it can only be seen later on. So when the Quran is being revealed and Surah Kawthar was revealed, the Prophet ﷺ was in Mecca. Most number of Muslims was very low. It seems as though everything was against, all the odds were against the Muslims. Yet, if you look at it retrospectively, now you understand how powerful this Surah is yeah, in, the, in, the, in what it was saying. Yeah, so um, you know that's where the miraculous nature of the Quran was. Yeah, so so this this is a very good strong argument as well, with regards to its. So when people, for example, like like can't understand how the the nature the the, the Quran can be something which is, um, you know, is something that cannot be replicated, you have to have a vast understanding of language, of like the the, the laws in the Sharia, also like past incidents as well. Not just from the Muslims' point of view, but also and also things that were happening in the days of Sahaba that was like uh, well known to them, but to us that information hasn't reached us. So they, when this surah was revealed, it's very, 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 very highly possible that the people understood that this surah, what the surah was mentioning, was so profound that this could not have come from a human being. Yeah. So again, when we kind of try to understand the ijaz of the Quran, we're looking at it in a very linear manner. But in reality, it could be so layered, this issue. Like some of the some of the scholars have said, like Anushah Kashmir Rahimahullah, he says in um, you know in one of his books that the some of the early scholars said the ijaz of the Quran is that it's being able to find all the ijazes of the Quran is impossible. That's what their argument was. Okay, uh, there are three types of Zulfast hairstyles which the Prophet ﷺ is reported to have had at different points within his life. Does the Hanafi Madhab recognize his Zulfa as Sunnah? Like, look, the Prophet did not have three hairstyles, first of all, understand, because we know he shaved his head. So therefore he had, if you shave your head, what happens? Your hair grows, isn't it? So if your hair is going to grow, let's say, a centimeter every week, therefore every week the Prophet ﷺ had a different hairstyle. Now, when, when narrations mention that he had like three types of long hairstyle. This is not that he's like deliberately kept three types of hairstyle. This is just observations some people made. Maybe there was lots of observations, but the only observation that have reached us, let's say there was like 50 observations, but only the observations of three people have reached us. Right? So now we think that the Prophet ﷺ only had three types of hairstyle. So obviously this is not correct. Uh, that's the first thing to understand. So when people say, for example, like the Prophet ﷺ, he wore like red clothes and he wore white clothes and he wore this, it doesn't mean he only wore those. Like if we were to look at the wardrobe of the Prophet ﷺ in the 23 years of his life, clearly there would have been more clothes that he wore. But 
there wasn't someone who was like documenting every single type of clothing that he had. It was just people kind of like said, oh yeah, remember the kind of clothes the Prophet used to wear? Oh yeah, I remember he wore a red clothing. Oh, I remember he wore this. I remember he wore this. So it was, it, a lot of it was like that. Now, is it recognized as, no, so it's not Sunnah Mu'akkadah to keep that. It's just something which is a normal habit of the Prophet Wasallam. If you do it, it's fine. You're not sinful. There's no reward in, in doing it. But if a person was to do it because, like, for example, like they just like really had so much admiration for the Prophet Wasallam that they just want to try and like imitate him and all these things, then Alhamdulillah, that's a very good thing. That's like a noble thing to do. Yeah, in, the, in, 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 this, in this aspect. But there's nothing in the Hanafi like, school which says that you have to sort of like have these or there's like reward in, in having hairstyles like this. Not at all. Uh, are you aware of the online feuds between the two Imams from up north, Shahid Ali and Usman Iqbal? No, no, no way. Okay. Uh, uh, Curious Cat is over. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah. My throat. See, I've got my scarf here today just to kind of like warm up my throat for you guys. All right. So let's check out some more of your questions. Uh, if a Musalli is disabled and he struggles to pray Salah in a calm posture, he moves excessively, sometimes Imam gets distracted, should he should he be stopped from coming to the Masjid or should he still come? And I don't know exactly the situation of this Musalli, but if it's causing a big disturbance, then he shouldn't attend the Masjid. Yeah. So if a person is causing disturbance to other people praying their Salat, they are, they are not obliged to attend the Masjid. And in fact, if it is causing a lot of problems, like for example, someone has very bad fits in the masjid and it's causing a lot of disturbance regularly then they, they shouldn't be attending what did you have for supper i had ribs <laughs> nice sticky ribs uh which you know i shouldn't have had because of my arthritis but I had to have you know you had that craving you know you're not having tea today yes i had tea uh abu Safura, i have no questions here for the barakah <laughs> mashallah mashallah that's the way. Bro, what do you think about tomorrow? Should we do a should we do a, a chaiwala chakkar? Should we do one? Shaykh, what's a good routine one should undertake for Dirsin Izami? I mean, I don't know exactly what you mean by a good routine. It depends where you're studying, it depends your whole like lots of things. Uh Shukran Ana Ruhtu ila Nom Ana ممتن لك عشان إجابتك أسئلتي مع السلام الله يسعدك يا رب ما شاء الله سعودية 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 ما شاء الله so if you guys have been watching our Arabic podcast ما شاء الله we have brother Abu Abdullah and sister Noura on there and we have you know Maulana Hamza Maulana Hamza is actually Maulana by the way he's graduated from the sand very very ما شاء الله very capable الحمد لله like one of the like there are some scholars out there who kind of uh, graduates out there who I can like definitely say that they have like very good potential, uh, you know, in in the sciences. So he's like one of them, I would say. Alhamdulillah. But he does obviously doesn't show. He's a very nice guy. Um, but yeah, Alhamdulillah. So uh, hope you guys are enjoying those Arabic podcasts. Uh, you know, you know, it'd be good for some of you guys to to participate as well, to kind of brush up on your Arabic or maybe just get a bit of confidence. I'm the only guy that shows his face. <laughs> yeah, I'm the only guy that shows his face. Uh, is it permissible to have uh, pictures, drawings at home? Many scholars seem to be okay with it nowadays. Your views? Um, according to the Hanafis, basically, if, if it's a large picture, large image, having it hang, hung on the wall, it's, uh, not, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, you know, like offensive. It's considered offensive. Uh, if it's like a small image, which is roughly the size of your hand, then there's scope for that. They say that if it's a small image, that if you were to have it in the distance and you look at it, you can't you can't make out what it is exactly. Um, this is if it's a drawn image, like hand drawn, if it's like drawn. But if it's like a printed, it's like a, a picture, then I would say there's more scope for it. Do husbands have to provide money to their wives even if the wives are earning? Yes, yeah, as long as they're working with the permission of their husbands, then they have to. Husbands have to provide for them. Even if you if you do go for that far, some will use that. To justify their disbelief, so not worth it. Okay, I don't understand that. Apart from teaching, what other ways can you utilize knowledge after graduating Alim course? Uh, apart from teaching, so you got like you can do further research, you can do you can you can do further studies, you can uh, write books, you can write articles, you can work for uh, Sharia boards, um, you can be an advisor, 
uh, there's like literally lots of like, jobs you can go into. Uh, it depends what kind of thing you want to specialize in as well. I would suggest specialize in something and you'll find lots of opportunities. If you arrive in the masjid and the imam is about to say salam, but you quickly join, as soon as you join, imam says salam and you can't even reach the part where you raise your finger in tashahud, what do you do? That's fine. As long as you said Allahu Akbar, you're in the salat. I think they mean riba with in game money. I play this footy manager game and you get extra money if you put money in your savings and they call this interest. So as long as it's not like real money, if it's real money, then no, not allowed. But if it's not real money, you're not dealing with real money. It's just like uh, fantasy money or fake money. That's okay. Uh, my dear Sheikh, do you like jammy dodges? Yes, bro. Bro. I like da jammy dodges, man. Yeah, it's supposed to be like a Bradford accent there. I know, man. I like dam jammy dodges. Time for a joke. Uh oh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Long time now. C5 rule, definitely. Where you been, man? Apologize. The Nahu and Mansubat question appeared three times, at least the first two. No problem, no problem. Finished my two, 20 week internship not too long ago. Alhamdulillah. May Allah put barakah in your time and your effort and give you a good uh, job with a good wage. Alhamdulillah. So that you can uh, worship Allah and you can provide for your family and you can help the Ummah as well. If you subtract two from two, What's left, Patan student? Hamko sawal samaj nahi aya. Teacher, if you have two rotis and you ate both, what's left, Patan salan? That's actually a very good answer. That's such a like, you know, Subhanallah. That sawal makes my iman taza. Yeah, mashallah. Uh, my dear Sheikh, why the long silence? I was actually looking for an answer. I read a hadith that goes something like one should sit on the table where al should not sit on the table where alcohol serve. Now, if you go to out with the non-Muslim friends who drink, will it be sinful to visit with them while they drink? Um, again, this is like a very sort of like a difficult sort of like this is a difficult scenario because it's not like the exact scenario the Prophet was talking about in in Medina because when alcohol became prohibited, it was like everyone was told to show that alcohol is something that's wrong. Right, and so so much so you you couldn't have the vessels at home, alcohol vessels. You couldn't have those. You weren't allowed to have those, and you weren't allowed to even like you know um, sit on a table where alcohol is being served. You couldn't sit on that table, and so forth. It's like totally banned. But in today's time, like if you go to a lot of restaurants, they do serve alcohol as well. So does it mean that you can't attend that restaurant? Not necessarily. Right. So the hadith is specifically talking about a specific event. Or gathering where alcohol is being served and you're okay with it. Now, if you're living in a non-Muslim country and they like work colleagues and they have this, I would say that it would be permissible to attend that gathering as long as you tell them that look, I don't drink alcohol and stuff like that. Right. So it's not talking about the exact context of what the Prophet was uh, was mentioning over there. However, as a Muslim, you know, it's very important for us to kind of show the people that look, this is something that's not allowed. Uh, Non-Muslims can drink alcohol in front of Muslims, um, but non-Muslims Muslims themselves, they should, like, I think, make it clear to other people that they don't drink alcohol. So that the, at least other people will have some sort of respect. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. There are some names of Arabic countries that tend to masculine rather than feminine. Is there a reason? Not too sure. Not too sure. Min bayn sulbi wa taraib. My dear Sheikh, can you please, uh, oi matey in a British accent. Oi matey. Oi matey. Oi matey. Oi, Mehdi. Salam, Mufti. How well is well with yourself? Alhamdulillah. Very good, very good. Thank you very much, Mu'in. Back on the Arabic lessons and can't thank you enough for making that. Alhamdulillah, Mu'in. Really good to see you uh, getting back into it. Alhamdulillah. Benefiting, yeah? Hope you, you're benefiting. Hope you're, you know, and uh, that's that's why what I intended with the, with the course itself. That's how I wanted, really. Uh, thank you. I'll ask my jokes getting appreciated. Brother, what is the order to... Jazakallah khair from the woods. This is Benefit Content and Company. Really appreciate it, man. Really appreciate it. Brother, what is the order to carry out Juma prayer? For example, if the, is the Azan, the sermon, the Arabic khutta, then plus just to check a brief uh, answer, suffice. Yeah. So basically what you do is Azan, and then you give the Arabic khutbah, and then you pray two rakats, and then finish. That's it. Yeah, in that particular order. Uh... 
So Mufti Saab, what advice would you give a student or madrasa coming to the end of his studies? I would say try to specialize in something if you can. <coughs> Alhamdulillah. So yeah, try to specialize in something uh, if you can. Uh, definitely. And that would be like, and try to look into something that you'd be interested in. I would say that that's probably one of the most important things. Because a lot of people that graduate, they, they have no idea, no clue of what they want to do in life. So try to at least before you graduate, know where you want to go in life. Like you might have a lot, a, a good, strong idea of where you're inclined towards or what kind of field, whether it's teaching, imama, whether it's further education, whether it's like working in the business sector or Sharia board, whatever. If you take the opinion that student loan is permissible to take out, do you have to pay as soon as possible, even if your wife's uh, in 30 years? I was thinking, um, no, you wouldn't have to pay it back as soon as possible because the way that I think it works in most cases is they just take out a certain amount from you, isn't it? Or is it that as the, the increase, the, the, does the in interest increase the longer you delay it? I don't know how exactly how it works. Uh, I've read a book in Darul Salam that the Prophet Sallallahu gave his possessions names, example his weapons. Are there example of pious people doing this? I mean, there's examples of non-Muslims doing this. It was just a normal cultural thing. Uh, uh, yeah, so. يَهْدِيكُمُ اللَّهُ يُسْلِحْ بَلَكُمْ جَزَاكُمُ اللَّهُ خَيْرِ So when you sneeze, you say Alhamdulillah. And when a person hears you, it's good to say, it's not necessary, it's good to say, يَرْحَمُكَ uh, اللَّهُ And then the person who sneezed responds, يَهْدِيكُمُ اللَّهُ So basically it's like this, Alhamdulillah, all praises to Allah. The other person says, uh, may Allah bless you. And then you say, may Allah guide you. Uh, yeah, so non, even non-Muslims, they call like their weapons and they call their cars by names and things. It's like a tradition in some cultures that have it. Yeah, so I'm sure there, there would have been, <clears throat> there would have been like uh, many sort of like uh, later people, Sahaba, Tabi'een, who had names for certain things that they had. Uh, I've read a book, Dar es Salaam, that the Prophet Sallallahu gave his possession name. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Jaiwala defo my. Tike, tike. Deal. Deal, bro. Uh, what books on any subject that a common Muslim can understand you suggest for Sheikh reading? Um, you know actually what to do? I'll tell you. If you go to Seekers Hub, you go to their website, they've actually got a book list that they've actually made for new Muslims, I think for just general Muslims, and it's very useful. I've, I've checked through some of them. They look very good. So check that out. Yeah, actually, I'll just check. Check if I can find it. See, because I think that's a very good uh, reading list. I think I might start slowly make my own reading list. Reading list. See, I got a Google Google for you guys. Yeah. So if you go to the S there, so if you go there, you'll find it. Seeker, uh, Seekers Hub reading list. Uh, if you woke, if you wake up a fajr but fall back to sleep without praying, like you turn off your alarm, can you pray when you wake up? Yes. Yeah. No lockdown in Birmingham. Uh, I mean, our understanding of lockdown basically means that you know, you know, just just be good people, yeah. And we are, mashallah, you know, as as you guys all know, Birmingham people are probably one of the best people in the UK. And so we're allowed to meet one person outside, outside of our bubble. And we can go to restaurants, but we can't sit there. We can order from them. Uh, and essential because Jaiwala is like essential, isn't it? So like maybe you should upload snippets of frequently asked questions on YouTube. Many questions pop up repeatedly after every other week. Yeah. If someone could actually go through my videos and start like breaking them down and send it to me, I mean, that would make it really easy for me. Uh, but I don't, I literally have no time in the week. Like I'm that stretched proper, stretched in the week. To be able to do much, um, you know, because I heard the hadith that says someone who abandons prayer is a disbeliever. So a majority of the scholars said it doesn't literally mean they become a disbeliever. It means that this is an action that disbelievers do, as in disbelievers don't pray. So it doesn't necessarily mean, according to majority, most scholars say that it doesn't mean that it means the hadith means it's like a threat. Uh, uh, Mufti Sahib, your Bradistan accent was very Scottish, mashallah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's become Scottish, isn't it? All right, I need to make it Bradford now. So, how's it, how's it going there, man? How's it going there? 
from Bradford. No, I can't do it. I need to put that. I need to put that button again and make it say. Is it permissible to message someone you're interested in marrying before nikah? Yes, it's permissible, but I would say they should always it should always be chaperoned. As long as there's another person in the conversation, so that the conversation doesn't steer towards something impermissible. How should people seek knowledge in the U.S.? I don't know. I don't live in the U.S. I wouldn't be able to. Best to ask someone who a scholar who lives in the U.S. to be able to answer that. I, I, I honestly don't know exactly how what your situations are. Apart from, don't go to Capitol Hill yet, and don't try to wear horns on your head and try to you know break in and and take stuff. Please don't seek knowledge like that. Uh, Do you think it's uh, possible to open a government funded school that also has uh, Ilmiya classes? I don't know in the UK how it works. I mean, I'm not sure how the, what the government policy is, but possibly, possibly. I mean, I don't think it would be a good idea to have a, a school and an Ilmiya course. I don't think that's a wise. I think they should have a school with teaching Arabic here, definitely. I think these Islamic schools out there should scrap the Alimiya courses for, you know, the, 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 the under 16 uh, Islamic schools. Scrap the Alimiya course and just teach them the basics of the deen. Arabic and just like basic fiqh and basic things they need to know. And maybe translation of the Quran. That's, I think, at best with them. Is it necessary to cover all windows 100% in home because of the possibility that someone can see inside the Muslims a lady lives in the home? Did the Sahabiyat eradicate all possibilities? Uh, they didn't used to have like windows like we have. I mean, they see, the thing that, that they had was privacy. So privacy basically is people shouldn't be looking into people's houses. So as long as you've taken enough measures, right, the right measures, uh, and like for example, you put some some curtains there, you put some blinds there, you put something there. Generally, people are not nosy. They don't like looking into people's houses. Uh, but I know some areas people are very nosy. They like looking into people's houses and letterboxes. So the Prophet saw some one day there was a guy who was actually peeping through the cracks through the door. The Prophet saw and the Prophet said to him that. I was about to poke your eye out there. Yeah, how dare you look into my house? So this is where you know. Uh, I would just say, look, just just kind of like normal people. I think even non-Muslims they have a sense of privacy as well. So even if they don't put like nets up, they still expect people not to peep into their house. Salamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Sharif and Wasala. What seems to be the prevailing Arai sentiment? Upon opinion on Trump's failed coup, I have no idea. Wallahu alam. CNN, Fox, and dominate the air. I have no idea about politics, so I'm the wrong guy to ask about politics. I'll probably just say to you, I just see what you guys see on the media. Yeah, and that's my answer. May Allah reward you, Shay, for all your videos and efforts. Could you do a crash course about the fiqh of nikah, contract suitability, talaq, where you mentioned the most important things? Actually, that's a good idea. Let me just make a note of that. It's an excellent idea. Let me just note it. All right. Nikah crash course. Yeah. Done. Uh, I mean, there's a power, major power breakdown in Pakistan today. No electricity in 80%. Whoa. Crazy, that is. Dhul Qarnain smashed it. <laughs> yeah, Dhul Qarnain. That was a funny one, isn't it? I mean, like, you can imagine, like, someone saying, Nasradamas had predicted that. In the year 2021, a man with two horns will stand on the hill and will bring down, you know, like you can imagine someone like coming out with some, trying to fit an ayat of the Quran or some trying to fit some sort of like old saying onto this the best they can to kind of fit in with the Jal system. And, uh, how's the weather there? It's minus one in London. Over here, I can actually tell you because I've got my phone here and I can just check on my phone all right let's just see uh, it is oh minus one it is minus one here as well in birmingham sharif you guys have been told directly my standard for Birmingham accent is arthur shelby from peak <laughs> yeah now why why do you guys want to kind of cuss the birmingham lang accent you shouldn't be cussing it. Are angels more superior or humans? I have no idea. Assalamu alaikum. Is there any podcast on Fusha you recommend? Yes, the podcast that we do on Fridays. If you're not familiar with it, we actually do a podcast 
uh, on Fridays, 10 p.m. UK time, and it's just pure Arabic, so you can check that out. Hassan Ali, does a nosebleed or natural bleeding from the gums after brushing teeth break wudu? If it's a nosebleed and blood comes out the nose, wudu breaks. If it's a teeth bleed and uh, you spit and there's more blood in there, there's a lot more blood in there than saliva, then your wudu breaks. Yeah. But if it's less, it won't break. But as for nosebleeds, if, if your nose is bleeding and the blood's coming down, then your, your wudu breaks. Salaamu Alaikum, grammatically Arabic, if one... Gives one, if one gives one processions names, does the gender have to match? Can you call your call Bob? Uh, I don't understand. I ain't got that one. Grammatically, I sound grammatically. If one gives one one's possessions, you mean possessions, yeah, names. Does that gender have to match? No, no. You can you can give any any sort of like there wouldn't be a like a gender fluidity, bro. You can call your possessions anything you want. You can call it a he or a she or a it. You think an Islamic primary school that covers the suffer curriculum would be a good idea or is that too much? I want to run a school in the future. I don't know. I mean, I'm not the best guy to ask for schools because I have never like taught in a school or anything like that. I've just studied in a, in a school when I was young. Best thing to do is ask people who are actually in that field. They'll give you a better understanding. What I'm saying is a lot of the Alimiya courses that I know, I think they're wasting their time in teaching the kids the full Alimiya course. I think they should teach them just a and a very very abridged, watered down, uh, just the essentials that they need for life. Just that. Humans are more superior because of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Subhanallah. Uh, Ahmad, mashallah, ahlan wa sahlan. Oh, mashallah, Ahmad. Alhamdulillah. How's things? How's uh, things in? Um, was it Worcestershire? Worcestershire, yeah. Worcester, Worcester. Uh, previous student, I was looking through my notes and found your usul fiqh videos from three years ago and noticed you are live. I hope you have, alhamdulillah, zakallah khair. Hope uh, you en you're enjoying uh, your uh, lockdown. I suppose you're in lockdown as well, yeah? Zakallah uh, khair for remembering me. Thank you very much. Yeah, really, I, I like that. You know, sometimes when you have a student, sometimes and a long time goes by and then they contact you. I think that's something I like. Kind of makes me feel... It makes me feel wanted it's <laughs> inside. The insincerity time has started after 11 o'clock. I've become a bit insincere. Um, so, Ahmad, Zakala Khair, you made my day, bro. Made my day. Yeah, I definitely remember you, man. Uh, and how's, uh, how's your cousin uh, Somab? Somab, is he good? Uh, usually, after I brush my teeth, I spit out the, the toothpaste and not rinse recommendations by my dentist. Can I do this while fasting? Yes, you can do it while fasting. As long as you, you're definite that you're not going to swallow the... Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Ahmad. Hi, me, new... Uh, Nedris Usman, ahla wa sahlan, welcome. Welcome to this channel. I remember start, we had 50 students doing Alim course first year, only six carried on into the second year. Whoa, 50 students, subhanAllah. Uh, need, need... <laughs> <laughs> Maji, you know, we got our special insincerity moments we do uh, when we cycle, yeah? We know that, bro. Yeah, and when, when I get the Go, GoPro, then the proper insincerity is coming out. <laughs> Hussain Patel, wa alaikum as Is becoming a mufti good for being imam if you're not sure what to do? Yes, definitely. I mean, I think studying anything specialization is going to help you. Definitely, 100%. And, you know, like uh, studying iftar course or even tahassus fil hadith course or tahassus fil adab. Anything that you do tahassus in is going to definitely 100% help you. Uh, lol. Great translation. I hit a typo pothole. <laughs> Don't worry. It happens to me on loads. See, I have a problem when I type, right, you know, like on my phone. I find it difficult to type a lot on my phone because, like, I got arthritis and then in the winter, my fing fingers get a bit, like, you know, stiff. So I find it a bit difficult to kind of, I can't use two thumbs. So I use my one finger. So the amount of mistakes I make, right? Set a space bar, like R or something or some, and it kind of joins words together. So don't worry, bro. I understand totally. Uh, yes, uh, Maji, we know, bro. We know what stays in writing. What happens in writing stays in writing. Zakallah double O. Can you record your cycling? Uh, yes, I can record cycling. Badminton I can't record because it's illegal <laughs> to boo <play> badminton. <laughs> cycling I can, inshallah. I'm going to get a camera, inshallah. I'm going to hopefully order a camera 
maybe this week or next week, GoPro. I'm just like thinking seven, GoPro seven, eight or nine, which one is the best one to get for me? Once I get that, new series coming out, the Cycling Me. Only problem is, is I don't know if the sound is going to be working well. There's going to be a lot of wind, isn't there? Uh, start. where did you do iftar? I did it in Pakistan. Love your Vordi. Love your Vordi. Uh, that's something good. <laughs> this up, we all know about your typos from your tweets. Yes. You know me, I'm a guy who don't really care about typos. Like, I've gone past, you know, like old granddads. I'm like an old granddad. I don't care about typos. I don't care about what people think of me anymore. Yeah, I've kind of reached that age now. Where I just type stuff and just put it up like... Trump, <laughs> I think Trump's reached granddad level. He just write type stuff and then he doesn't even care what he writes. Like he doesn't like go back to it and read it again and, oh, you know what? I missed this word. Let me just, no, I don't really care. Uh, oh, uh, it's your arthritis. I thought you were dyslexic. <laughs> yeah, bro. That was a, that was, that was, you know what? Ahmad just done my day for me, yeah. And that just brought me back down again, bro. That just totally destroyed. Now I would have to get you back for this. Uh, why is badminton illegal? Because technically you're not supposed to have uh, two people. or, or Actually, two, you, can, you can have a singles match, can't you? Yeah, singles match would be okay. Uh, you can't have like four people or so, more than two people, gathering in a place for these kind of activities at the moment in the UK. Uh, now I feel bad. That's it, bro. Too late. Too late. Now you will have to suffer the, the wrath of Liaqat. I met the madrasa name. The madrasa, I studied by my teacher called Sheikh Thaqib. And this was at a madrasa called Tayyiba. Madrasa Tayyiba. So how do you think of many ideas whilst talking or delivering a speech and go blank? So what you basically do is have cards in front of you. Get used to like having some cards. And don't be shy of using those cards when you give a talk. And a lot of people think that it's it's like... Uh, humiliation. Yeah, it's like something which is degrading if they have if they read from a paper card. No, have some cards, so you know exactly what to follow. Uh, you should create a new channel separate to this vlog stuff like exercise, biking. Yeah, actually, it's a good idea, isn't it? Yeah, Sofian, you are the man, Sofian. You know what? If it wasn't for you, bro, I think probably half this channel I wouldn't have the inspiration, especially these teas. Well, this tea is not your tea today. This is the blue tea. I never understood your Trump tweet at all today. You know what? I was in those moments. You know, sometimes what happens is I'm, I'm on like an idea comes to my head and I just don't even think about the the like the global consequences of that tweet. And I just write it. I just think, you know what? Everyone's having a go at Trump. Let me just have a go at Trump. It's about time. Four years now. Four years too late. Uh... Because of the times I took, I thought it was some other way because I played myself and the lockdown didn't come to my head. Yeah, that's what happens, you know, sometimes you don't even realise lockdown and you just like break some laws. I think everyone in the UK has probably broken some laws now. Yeah, hit the like button, Zakallah Khair Sharif, like button, hit the like button, mashallah. Let's do it, man, let's do it, let's do the, the like. <laughs> I might get my uh, Twitter account uh, locked. <laughs> yeah, look at that man, Trump. 88 million. That You know what? That's sounds dodgy, that is. They let him say all these things, become so, 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 such a celebrity on Twitter. And then all of a sudden, yeah, they bring him down. I think there's something dodgy going on. What do you guys think? So you guys like the lights in the back here? Yeah? The lights in the back and... Yeah, these are little nice bead lights. Hope you don't see my tweets on Trump. <laughs> but the entertainment tweet was excellent. I wish I could retweet it a hundred times. Yeah, that's definitely, that's the reality, isn't it? A lot of people, it's like, unfortunately, the way that the culture is sort of like going is people are slowly losing the motivation to actually study seriously. Like they want to learn, but they don't want to learn. Right. They want to learn, but they want to kind of learn it in a very relaxed movie style way where they're just watching a film and they don't have to make effort to write notes down or to memorize things. Uh, and I think that that kind of culture slowly is having a big effect on, on many Muslims around the world where they expect knowledge to be to be kind of given to them in like 
these kind of like movie style, entertainment style, and controversy. Uh, have you ever heard Jordi? No, yeah, uh, yeah, Jordi. Why I mate? Why I? I'm from Jordi. Why I mate? That's what I saw now. And cause I used to watch when I was in school. We used to watch this thing called Jordi Racer. I don't know, Maji, you probably watched it. Jordi Racer. Yeah, and it's about this guy, little kid, and he's got this pigeon, and he's in Newcastle. Uh, yeah. So Jordi. Out of 10, how hard is it to look after long hair? I mean, at the moment, it's a, it's kind of easy, but the only problem is at the moment, I've got like a lot of hair that's kind of like just randomly just coming out. See that? Every time I just put my hand in my hair, that's what I'm thinking of cutting my hair, shaving it. Yeah, so just to kind of make it strong again, the roots strong. Is it okay f uh, to read Quran if your brother is sleeping on a higher bunk bed? Uh, Ahmad Surati from second year is asking this. <laughs> yeah, it's permissible. Yeah, I mean, it would be permissible to do that. Because they're not kind of doing it out of disrespect. Trump is the only person that I ever heard that has a website li lie counters that track the number of lies and misstated facts that he makes. <laughs> Trust me, that guy. That guy is he's going to be a historical figure, man. Biker Grove for me, lad. Oh, yeah, remember Biker Grove? Biker Grove as well. Yeah, Biker Grove. What was, how did it, how did the kind of like uh, the, the intro go in the beginning when you start? <sighs> Forgot man. I'm gonna cut your hair. Yeah, I'm thinking about I don't know. I'm thinking about maybe do a poll, see what I get, see what the results I get. Maybe actually I might do for charity. Why that? I'll do for charity. Yeah, cut my hair for charity, collect money, give it to uh, the orphans in Yemen or another country. What happened to the Urdu vids? Yeah, definitely, man. I need to do some Urdu ones in it. Uh, I don't know, man. I just just been kind of like, yeah, I need to do it. You know, you're right. The long hair reminds me. You said you have hair applied to. It. So every time you touch it, your hands get oily. Yeah, that's the thing. Another thing. So at the moment, I've got like I put oil in my hair yesterday, like olive oil. So it's like, uh, you know, a bit, a bit sticky, greasy. Uh, shaved head that only works for babies biker 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 grove oh yeah that's kind of like ringing in my head now okay for charity i approve thank you very much yes for charity <sighs> yeah Allah. all right guys so i think uh we'll call it a night so we're the americans man i'm gonna ask the americans of so sharif sharif you're here still here yeah yeah americans where are you Americans, man? Yeah, you Trump supporters and you Trump haters. Uh, what do you think of wormholes? Wormholes, I don't know. I mean, I'm not really kind of like, I, haven't, I don't have any like qualifications in uh, physics to be able to discuss here at that level. But from my uh, cowboy understanding of wormholes, and it's possible, it's plausible, it's a possibility that there could be like this ability to be able to cut through the fabric of space and time, and travel through, you know, two between two points. Um, I think that, that that might be possible. Yeah, plausibility for it. I don't know. What do you think? Do you think it's uh, something which is possible? Have you kind of figured a way out that we can travel from one part of the world to another? Uh, I think you should ask your wife about the hair rather than viewers. We don't have to live with you. <laughs> yeah, I suppose so. But the problem is, yeah, I guess, I guess I'm gonna have to ask her. I mean, she won't, she won't mind. Uh, but the hair itself, it kind of like uh, sometimes the problem is, it like when I'm eating, it like fall. It's just like my hand there. Some came out. So when it falls in your food, I think that that's a bit problematic. Yeah, so fiance, I'm gonna have to tell her now. I'm gonna say Sofian said. The charity thing would be cool, but if not, enjoy while you have it. <laughs> How can we encourage Imams to make dua for the people that live on the same block and street in the masjid but don't pray, etc.? That's part of the circle of influence. Yeah, yeah e email. Email inshallah. Anyway guys, Jazakumullah khair. I'm gonna call it a night now. Yeah, I hope you guys, I'm going to make myself some uh, 
some uh, haldi, some turmeric, some turmeric tea here for my joints. And did you guys see my turmeric tea I, I put up on the uh, story? So check that out. Black holes are time vortex, in my opinion. Assalamu alaikum. See you tomorrow, inshallah. Uh, is it possible? I believe it says in the Quran about gates of heaven and how angels travel. Possible. That's I mean, that's the kind of thing, isn't it? Possibility. Possible, but we don't know exactly what that refers to. Uh, Sheikh, I have a question about dreams. I understand that if you have an evil dream that you shouldn't say to others, but what about a dream of Ibn Umar? So two angels bring... Yeah, I mean, they say you... Like, a lot of the, the, the bad dreams are not really... Like, evil dreams are not really true dreams. They're just kind of like your own emotions. That's why you don't tell them to anyone. As in, you don't want to kind of like tell people things where they might get suspicions about you for no necessary reason. Like, for example, you might see a dream that a person's fornicating with someone. And then person says, Astaghfirullah, you fornicate. They might have like... Yeah, so... Uh, so this is why I mean when they say don't tell the dreams they, if it's not a true dream uh, 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 you know an evil dream can be a true dream as well which you can tell people and the Prophet Sallallahu obviously was someone you could tell him all your dreams uh, randomly sal photoshop it uh, first uh, <laughs> so your tea tutorial excellent and he asked Hafsa uh, uh, ask the Prophet Sallallahu yeah so again, asking the Prophet Sallallahu obviously, you know, that would be different from asking just a random person. Uh, sweet dreams, random take care, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Adding ginger to your turmeric tea is good for your arthritis. Uh, I don't know about ginger, but that's turmeric. Why I put in there, it looks like ginger, doesn't it? But it's actually turmeric. It's orange. It's different from ginger. Uh, remember to say du'as, you too, mudassir, zakallah khair. May Allah bless all you guys. Sharif. Barakallah feekum, shukran, shukran to all of you guys. Allah Hafiz, brother. Take care. Relaxation session. Inshallah, inshallah. Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Take care, inshallah. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi. Island, island. And I can't, I'm, I just, my brain can't think of the island, Irish accent at the moment. But I've got an Irish accent here. <laughs>